Jeff Meacham Network, Multiverse of Media. For over 15 years, the recognized symbol of excellence and the standard bearer in coverage of sports and entertainment. JJ, Jeff, you want to kick this thing off? Because I'm still trying to process everything here. Yeah, <laughs> it's like... Um... Who wants okay. to go first? <laughs> well, come on in. It's open mic night with your host. You could maybe say there's really four topics, but it's split into six. The Renegade, J.J. Williams. The Sammy and Eddie Kingston thing. Which one's the better smelling turd? And his panel of co-hosts. I am... Founder. We'll call me that for today since we're going with the Jeff Jarrett love theme here this week, according to JJ. The West Coast Professor, Jeff Meacham. Karma is karma is karma. That's professional wrestling! Damn it! The Simple Man, Noah Foster. It's showtime! Yeah! How's it with JJ? How you doing, Jeff? Jeez. Yeah. And the Heat Man, James Hebert. Imagine Bill Burr, Joe Rogan, Paul White, the Baldies! There you go! It's so oh, God! Get in there! Short his ass and shit the bed. Uh, He's not Amber Heard. Give it time, JJ, <laughs> give it time. <laughs> now, I'm no. sure Jeff has some stuff, but <laughs> dumb move, just don't pull this bullshit again. You get one. Tony needs to stop caring about the ratings. Bradshaw said as long as the ads are in place, we're not going to lose that third hour. Real Bond does not have to be AEW live. They don't necessarily have to coexist with each other. We kind of saw that tonight to a degree. Along with a panel of guests. He's no longer glorious. Don't you bring that up. You want me to rant about what my NXT used to... No, no, we are done here for the night. I swear. Jay, stop it. Jay, stop it. Jay, stop it. Because you never know who may show up for open mic night. I leave our company in the capable hands of an extraordinary group of superstars, employees, and executives. The first thing that came to my mind was, it's about damn time. Amen! Oh, I literally God. touched everybody in the state's trash. So, so I've... <laughs> It's horrible, you guys. Peyton's new thing is uh, Dennis the Menace. But it's funny because she calls it... Dentist, the medicine. <laughs> and That's great. When Elliot Taylor came out and did Born for Greatness live, I was popping my pussy, having a great time. I didn't care. I was having so much fun. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Fuck Bill Belichick. <laughs> What is going on, everybody? Welcome to our Saturday brand of shenanigans. That is open mic night. And yes, we did clear the five minutes. So the F you in the opening, the fuck you in the opening is okay. But considering it's 420, I don't think it's going to matter because we're going to have to put other uh, 
discretionary advisements in our description here once I'm off the air. Anyway, I am not your usual moderator, at least not yet. I am the founder, as it says in the opening, the rene no, I'm not the renegade. I'm already tired. Don't mind me. Jeff Meacham is here. I'm going to go ahead and just bring everybody in because the founder, the, the moderator is not quite here yet. We're just going to get our BS session going. Happy 420 to everybody that partakes, the lower row in particular. Um, so <laughs> it, is, uh, it is April 20th, 2024. I cannot believe it's already April 20th of this year. Like where the hell is the first three and a half months of this year gone for Christ's sakes? But That's we are joined so far. Josh Mansfield, Step Boy Mike, Mr. Reliable, and the Cleavers here on 420 because well, it's 420 and the Cleavers here. So anyway, gentlemen, we uh, for those of you that were watching over on the across the multiverse, we just finished a TNA Rebellion. Those of you in the room with me got the spoiler because I forgot to mute my microphone as I was popping out of there. So congratulations oh, to Matt Hardy. Welcome back to TNA, Matt Hardy. Um, but guys. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, delightful. Yes, let I'm me go. Glass that WWE. Just saying, sorry. No, no, no. I, I, I feel that. And considering how AEW's been the last few weeks, I'm glad he didn't return there. So, he, he broken? Yeah, yes. He, well, I mean, no announcement is broken doesn't mean he is broken. We'll see. I, he gave, <laughs> he gave the world champion a twist of hate or twist of fate or whatever you want to call it. And so we'll see how that goes. But anyway, let's run around the room. Let's run around and let me talk. Yes, I kicked your ass already. Um. I'm going to run it around the room with everybody that came in in the order they came in. So, Josh, we'll start with you. How the hell have you been, Mansfield? Tired. Busy. My goodness. Yes. <laughs> Life keeps me busy, but holy crap. Just, I fucking love wrestling right now. That's it. That's it. There you go. Just, yeah. All hail the new era. Screw you, Tony Khan. Yes. All hail Triple H. And yes, oh my, I, I saw that. Yeah, Daniel, that's a spoiler for some people in the room and people in the chat room. So I'll go ahead and take that back down. If you're a Chucky fan, cool. You know, if, if you're if you're a Chucky fan, didn't see this last Tuesday, Wednesday's episode. Sorry about that that comment, but anyway. Well, I hope we don't nuke Santa Meach. Wait, hey, S Santa Meach is safe and secure in San Creator for now. He's going to be in Phoenix tomorrow. God help him. But um, anyway, that boy, how are you today, sir? We know the sports world is heating up. We've got. The Stanley Cup playoffs started today. The NBA playoffs, or the what do they what do they call it? The in the the play in tournament. That's what it's called. Um, the play in was a couple days ago. Now it's okay. the actual tournament. Oh, okay. So, so okay. So, yeah, because I, when, when I was out and about yesterday um, at a friend's concert, they were talking about the, the play in matches. So, if we're in the tournament, cool. How are you, sir, on this lovely Saturday uh, night? Finally, kind of broke the 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 nastiness with the allergy cough that I have. It's it's been a disaster. That's why I missed Sports Bar last week, and the, the week after that wasn't as all good either. But this week, I promise we're going to have a much better show. And of course, the NFL draft is coming up Thursday night uh, at seven thirty. We're going to do the pre-show stuff. So if you've never seen the NFL draft before and you have no clue what's going on, this will be your NFL Draft 101, then at 8 o'clock live, I'm expecting the first round pick to Chicago, and we'll just go for that entire first round. It's uh, I'm looking I'm looking greatly forward to that. I cannot wait to get Very back cool. to the season, so I'm happy with that. We are happy to welcome back the Cleaver Colin Andrew into the uh, in the open mic night for the first time in a little while. We know he uh, you had a busy unexpectedly busy day today at work and another one on the horizon so we thank you colin for coming in how is your life going good sir right now it's going really good because i've been on i worked like just under 12 hours today and now i've been sitting on the couch for the last little bit and enjoying my 20. so i'm feeling good i'm feeling hungry um again i haven't ate anything today but it's cool to be back. It's been a while since I think the last time I did anything like wrestling related video was yeah. this like a couple months ago. Yeah. I don't do this much anymore. I've, I've changed a lot of things in my lifestyle and um, obviously smoking weed is not one of them, but um, <laughs> no, should it be by God, you know, but again, it's, it's like a perk to being like a cancer patient. So, you know, yeah, yeah. If you have any perks, I guess this is the fucking one. That that but, that would be uh, yes yes, but you know, uh, uh, senior four twenty, 
senior bro, uh, Walter Cruz. Again, happy, happy holidays. Merry Christmas to you. Yeah, um, I, I was going to say, Colin had a hard day at work, but then he got high. Walter was watching the boxing, but then he got high. The rest of us on top aren't high, and we know why because they got and high. I haven't, and I haven't, I haven't seen Mr. Stat Boy Mike in a yeah. long time. It's been a while since him and I have conversed with each other. Uh, so you know, it's it should be fun. I uh, I'm gonna give this until like midnight, and then I'm gonna eat something and go to bed. Just make perfect, it, man. You know, That's you know, okay. I told you I'll be on for a while, but um, but no, I, I we get, there's a lot of things going on right now, and uh. You know, before I forget, fuck the young bucks. And uh, <laughs> okay, well, we'll get there. Since you're since you're here, we'll get to those assholes. I know. Uh, I, I just, <laughs> I just, you know, I just had to make it clear because I'm not on link things very often. So that yes, and and that's been the <laughs> that's been the standard run around the room for a lot of folks. Walter, before we get to you, we're going to bring in our final two panelists, that, and then we'll ask them how they're going today. First of all, the man who called the action for us for TNA Rebellion, the simple man with a spectacular voice, the voice of the JM man, as he calls himself. Noah Foster, good to Hello. see you. And I will hold off on our last panelist because he's got he's got his camera off, so I don't want, I don't want to assume anything. Um, let's see. He, okay. Well, no, oh, well, no, it's to be right back, so just kidding. Yeah, um, I got to do something real quick, but uh, okay. I'll the intro. Also, good to see you guys. I'll be back uh, momentarily. Sounds good, brother. All right. Well, there you go. Walter, how's your Saturday going? Going well. Um, I'm doing good. Be better in about five more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, yes. But I'm ready to go. Yeah. Um, so far, this the boxing is a little boring, but I'm just waiting for the main event. Like, I really don't even follow boxing like that anymore. It's It's lost the... It's prestige that Showtime and HBO don't even exist anymore with, with boxing. That's you yeah. talk about end of an era. That's an end of an era. There's no more Showtime boxing. There's no more HBO. That's crazy. Well, the, 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 the entire presentation and approach to the boxing has changed exponentially in the, uh, in the uh, advent of UFC becoming more popular and boxing kind of getting the, getting the bad rep for the overly uh, concussive nature of it. So it is, you know, mm -hmm. It is what it is, unfortunately. And uh, I mean, for those live boxing, I, I've never watched a boxing peer review that I'm aware of. Um, I mean, I love the Rocky movies. I love the movies about boxing, but the actual boxing, I have never partaken. So, all right. He is eating, but I'm told to go ahead and bring him in. Ladies and gentlemen, our moderator par excellence, the man who did the color analyst portion of our rebellion presentation, the renegade of wrestling, JJ Williams. JJ, how are you, brother? How's it going, everybody? Good, good to see good. you. Well, hey there. How there? Oh there. You know what I'm saying? I'm, yes, yes. I'm stoned there. Yeah. Good to see you, JJ. It's been a while, bub. Good to be seen. Good to be seen. Well, at least once I come back on camera. Yes, 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 yes. That's what she said. Hi, JJ. Hey, troublemaker. Yes. So, so <laughs> full, full disclosure, I did, I, I did invite Josh in. I did. Uh, Make sure that uh, I, I talked to Greg as well. We we were finding ourselves what could be a little short staff tonight because people were canceling last minute. So I did uh, I did I did call in the reserves, JJ. So there you go. Um, or at least I tried. Greg Greg is about as under the weather as Mikey was the last couple of weeks, which is why Greg is not here with us. He said he would, he'd be pretty useless. Was his exact quote tonight. So, um, but it is a Saturday. We've got topics to talk about. Colin pretty much summed up one of them for us with his thoughts on math. Dude, I, didn't, I didn't even know what the topics are. I'm sorry. I had <laughs> no, no dude, idea. Dude, I haven't seen shit it in all the day. hour. So fuck it. That's that's it. And uh it is it is your guys' you know let me, let me let me do this let me get this properly uh, balanced here. There we go. Now we got now, now we got one on each side of poor Mikey. Um uh <laughs> surrounded well, you, Michael you, surrounded you're trying to bring me back to the old Casa days where I actually did get a contact high on four twenty once. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. And those it of you that the best night of your life too, wasn't it, sir? Renegade knows the story more than I do. <laughs> we can share the we can share the four twenty stories. I, I mean, I mean, Colin, Colin's here, so we can do it in the first hour if if, if, if he's a new leave. chronicle. That's a no. That's a new chronicle. It's a members only thing. Let's do this. Oh, that, that's it. Up. Subscribe to the Casa channel, and there maybe JJ will get Colin and Walter in for some for some story times. Uh, <laughs> I'm just booking JJ channel for him at this point. Whatever. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's four twenty? Fuck it. Uh, All right. So JJ. On, you... <laughs> well, again, with longer flavor, baby. There he is. <laughs> Shit. 
again, JJ and I would be in Vegas with Dotilla for Rebellion if uh, finances were not what they were and scheduling was not what it was. But we would also have Rob Van Dam if Tony Kong would learn how to book people on the right day in the right city. But that's okay. He's he's on collision tonight or whatever he's on. So good for him. Good for Rob for getting the payday. Um, he's say. on some show that's not being watched because TNA Rebellion was on. It was <laughs> a superior show. That's valid. That's valid. But JJ, you are the man with the topics list, so I will throw the control of the moderation of the show back to you and get this underway, my friend. Sounds good. I do appreciate that. Let me scroll up to where the topics were. Yes. All right. So first topic at hand appears as if spring cleaning is upon us. We had five releases over the course of the last 24 hours. Um, as far as I can tell, there are, have been no others. And if reports from internet wrestling journalists are to be believed, then we've pretty much gotten everything we're going to get for the time being. Right. But I don't trust those journalists as far as I can throw them. So, you know. Well, I mean, um, I mean, I tell you which one it is. You probably thought pretty far. Nah, nah. I, I, I wouldn't want to. I'm too old. I'd probably throw my back out trying to lift either one of them. Valid. That's valid. That's fair. That's fair. You know, unless it was the one with the nickname of Hollywood, in which case I would probably be able to heave her pretty well. But oh, then, then we're just talking. Will you guys let me finish the goddamn joke? I wouldn't do that to a woman in the first goddamn place. That's fair. Jesus, Mansfield. <laughs> Sorry, we love the knees. It's, Can't help it. Get your titties yeah. tied up and out of a bunch, okay? Here we go. Go sit in the corner, Josh. So, and, in know. any event, five releases. Jinder Mahal, Sangha, Veer Mahan, Zaya Lee, and Zion Quinn. What are our thoughts on the releases? It's never good when people lose their jobs. But at the same time, when was the last time any of them, with the exception of gender, were relevant in a modern day storyline? You know, I mean, we had we had gender at the beginning of the year and the thing with The Rock and he got a title match with Seth Rollins. But Prior to that, he'd pretty much been on NXT within this year. Yeah. Zia Lee gotten a match here, a match there, but wasn't in anything substantial. Zion Quinn got squashed by Braun Breaker in like under 30 seconds on SmackDown. Yeah. So while it sucks to lose a job, are we really surprised that any of these people are gone? And if they decide to resume spring cleaning, who do we think could be next? Mm. Since it's his first time here in a long time, we'll go ahead and go to the Cleaver to start us off. None of these people surprise me. Um, Zia Lee has been pretty much a mockery of anything since she was called up from NXT. She's here, she's not, she's her, she's not, she's here with a sword next week, gone forever. Uh, Zion Quinn, again, not relevant, really anything besides that little stint in NXT 2.0 he did. And then we have the uh, the Maharaja the, in company, uh, Veer Mahan, and I don't, what was the other dude's name? Sanga. Shanky? Sanga, okay. Uh, nothing. Okay. Um, I say if there's a 90 day non complete clause, uh, you're gonna have Bullet Club Gold versus Gender and the boys for the six man titles. Right. In no time <laughs> because Tony's not gonna hinder that gender. So uh, yeah. he's gonna spend the money on that for sure because he's retarded. And uh, and. <laughs> Can I still say that? I don't know. I don't get um, Whatever. But uh, no. oh my. I'm a different generation. Okay. So, um, <laughs> and, and who's next? I don't know. Uh, 
I mean, who who don't we see anymore that we know that's hanging around? Like, who's like the new Zack Ryder? You know what I mean? Like, who's, yeah. who's just kind of like I don't I don't know because well, they, because Paul's been trying to utilize a lot of people more. Yeah, you know what I mean. So like right now, there's like so many people in different spots, and it's, it's hard to um, discuss. Uh, you know, and even like the crappiest of teams, like Pretty Deadly, they work. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's, I don't know. I don't really have like any who's next because I wasn't expecting. I mean, yeah, they're all jobbers in their own right. I mean, Gender is a former WWE champion. Yeah, Apollo. Yeah. Yeah. That, yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I could, I'd be cool with him going. And, you know, there's a couple other people, but it just it doesn't matter at this point because. They need those people that have been around for a while that are like grateful for getting the job, no matter what it is. Right. And doing it with pride. And Apollo is one of those guys he's had, his, he's had so many different gimmicks that have never really clicked for him. Yeah. And he's still like, when he comes out, he's like, yes. Like, you know, he's, he's happy to be there. He's the, he's the big G. Say, he's the big WWE. G. WWE. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, so, uh, but besides, like, I don't know. Again, none of these people have been anything relevant. We had that cheap pop with Jinder and Seth Rollins at the beginning of the year, and then we had Jinder with the Rock deal. But again, Jinder was just, uh, he is the right guy to do it because he, he had the credibility, but he has the dislikability. Yeah. And, but he has that, uh, Charisma, that modern day charisma, you know what I mean? Like, so I don't know. Um, yeah, it sucks they lost their jobs, but I think they'll be okay. I'm sure Veer Mahan will be back to playing triple A ball for the Pittsburgh Pirates here soon. And, uh, <laughs> good reference, <laughs> uh, you, you know, you know, or we're going to get the million dollar arm reboot. So, uh, there's the man. There's Mr. JJ. But yeah, that's that's all I have to say on that one. You know what though, Colin? The Pirates games only help they can get most seasons. So you know, hell, so they did they did lose at the Red Sox today. So there you go. So, but it's still April baseball. Like it don't really start counting until the middle of June. Well, yes, yeah, it, doesn't, by... it doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning's winning. Dominic it's Toretta true. doesn't matter. And Family. And, and you know, for 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 Pittsburgh, a win in April means they might even have a chance, and then they hit May and go, "Oh, that's right, we're the Pirates." Never mind. Um, yeah, yeah, I got a few bucks exactly. on them. I'm happy. Are you gambling again? Yep. You start with that. Come down I, here and kick your I ass. I noticed uh, last week I put. Uh, let me uh, ask me how to get bonus bets on Fanduel. Yeah, I saw. All right, reel it yes, in. Yeah, okay. we, we we don't do that here. Sorry, I know. Sorry, sorry. Oh, you, you who do said that put five bucks on Roman Reigns, don't even say you don't gamble. I, I remember. Don't. I don't. He, I he didn't. Did. He did. Mikey, don't get me. There's a difference between I'm a gambler and I have gambled. Yes, yes. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Walter. Thank you, Walter. No, Mikey, that's a bad Mikey. It's already started. That's fine. I'm good. Go on. I place bets when I go to Vegas. I don't bet online. All right. He is saying he is back. So we'll go ahead and yeah. do that. Yes. The simple man hey. is back. Hello. <clears throat> Wonderful. So to fill Noah in, we're discussing the releases, you know. Jinder Mahal, Sangha, Veer Mahan, Zaya Lee, Zion Quinn. What are our thoughts on everybody being released again? Nobody likes when people lose a job, but are we really surprised that these people are gone? If you believe internet wrestling journalists, that's it for now. I tend not to believe the people reporting that. Josh does. He subscribes to some of them. I don't believe in those and what they say. So until I get a press release from Stanford, Connecticut, saying that we're done cutting people, I don't believe shit. 
who do we think could be next if anyone is going to be released? Cleaver is the only one that's talked so far. I, I do want to retort a little bit to the Cleaver because the the people that first came up into my mind and maybe by me throwing out a couple names, you can give your thoughts on that. But with all the controversy going on with him, I'm surprised Drew Gulak wasn't named unless they're worried about a wrongful termination suit because nothing has been proven yet. So there could be that legality. Dexter Loomis, where the fuck has he been? Hmm, good point. You know, and, and likewise. I know, I know where he's at. but Where? Do tell because I've got no clue. He is going to come back as a member of this new Wyatt faction that doesn't surprise me he will be he will be part of this uh mr jerry slaughter and i have had many conversations in recent weeks of different ways of playing it out and loomis would be absolutely perfect for this really? if they're going with a wyatt six they need another person because we always seen redbeard pull from independent dates Roman's still on the roster. <clears throat> Bliss is coming back. Um, then you add Howdy in there, and that's four. You throw Loomis in there, and then maybe uh, Joe Gacy. Or, Joe Gacy is definitely somebody I thought of. You, you know, know so you throw them that. in there, and then someone else threw Nikki Cross in there. But having two females in a group, it seems a little, you know, there's always going to be that fight for like the alpha you know what i mean so um it'd be cool because of her character but uh obviously bliss will be a part of this but uh the six person i mean if i had to put if i had to put anyone in there it'd be dexter loomis absolutely all day i mean he's he's got a good character build to him i mean he's a he's a, he's a you know he's not the most like buff dude in the world but he's got a nice stature to him he's got that that silent but deadly look and if you put a mask on him or whatever you do you know maybe he's the red sheep you know what there i'm saying know. something like that so i think it work. but moving on not a bad idea before he re-debuted in tna tonight i thought matt hardy would be a good call too yeah so, that, yeah but yeah considering he showed up at the end of rebellion i don't see that happening right noah uh yeah accurate it's funny you mentioned nikki cross because she's another one i thought could be on the chopping block because yeah. what the hell have they been doing with her but well, throwing her potentially into this could be something you know um it, it's gonna sound like personal animosity but Honestly, aside from this new heel turn that she's on, just get rid of Candice and Indy. They've been doing nothing with Indy, really, since she came up from the NXT roster. You know, just Cedric Alexander. That was going to be mine. Yeah. Ashanti the Adonis. Yeah. Yeah, there's... there's some some of the people that Trips re-signed haven't been living up to the hype of bringing them back. Arguably, and me and Noah were mentioning this on the call today, AJ Francis is doing some of his best work over in TNA. True. So there, there's just a few names that I was thinking about. Jesus Christ. Josh, we'll go ahead and go down to you, then we'll start coming back up. So, when this started last night, the first indication we got was uh, Jinder, who has now been hindered, tweeting first, I quit. And then you see Sangha and Veer, who is, you know, done coming now. Um... And their messages they put out, it almost sounded like 
there was something going that happened behind the scenes. That, like, yes, they got released, but part of me feels like it was, like, they did try and quit. At least those three. At least gender. By how it sounded. Or at least how he tried to present it. Zia Lee, she hadn't been doing much. She had a feud with Becky Lynch, which was good for her, but then didn't do anything after with it. Zion Quinn, yeah, he was Breaker's jobber. The thing that, at least what has been reported as part of the reason is they had not been, yes, I know, they had not been progressing to the levels that management had wanted or had hoped to see. So it's hard to say. I mean, I feel bad for Jinder since he's been there since what, 2011? Right well, yeah. Well, well, but he was he, he was gone for a little bit in between that too. Remember he got he got brought back. Oh, I forgot about that. Never mind. Still though, it's but, still valid. Yeah. But yeah, it, it sucks. Honestly, the person who I thought I would see get released during that was Omos. Yeah. Just because I'm sorry. Yes, he's big. And yes, Undertaker's a fan of him. But I'm I'm sorry. You can't do much with him. Like, uh, like Oba Femi is what they wished Omos was. Yes. It's flat out. That's valid. There, the others I gotta say um, last year in the draft to Raw they drafted Odyssey Jones where's he been hasn't appeared on the that. brand once I forgot all about him god exactly like 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 not even like in backstage or like in the background of backstage or catering holy shit that, that, I didn't remember he was on the thing wow Mm-hmm. I'm I don't see any of, of females to really release um just off the top of my head. Uh honestly I'm still surprised Von Wagner's around. If I'm being honest. Well, that's NXT, but Oh yeah, he's, and, he's been having a great story going on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm just not biggest. If you're not first on the product, don't comment on the talent, Josh. I know, but okay. the other one I'm thinking of, another SmackDown, a SmackDown star, mm-hmm. Cameron Grimes. Yes, he's one that had so much potential. In yeah. NXT, had this great freaking feud with LA Knight that made them both. Yep. In NXT, he's come up to a main roster and done nothing. Like I feel bad for the guy because I was, I was wanting to go to the moon with him. Cameron Grimes, definitely a, a missed opportunity. He he's been a, he's become a a higher paid jobber on Friday night since he left NXT. It's disappointing as fuck. I think yeah. the problem with Cameron Grimes is they drafted him to SmackDown. Yes. And SmackDown is the Bloodline show. Yeah. And if you're not involved in any kind of angle within or around the Bloodline, you do not get TV time. Even the women struggle for good TV time and angles over there. It's valid. Mm-hmm. Cameron Grimes would be better suited on Raw. Yes. Look at how the creeds have ended up over there. Yep. Yeah. Have they reached their full potential? Absolutely not. Are they featured more than Cameron Grimes and having Banner matches? Yes. Yeah. It's just it's like seeing people lose their jobs. So well, yeah. Hopefully, you know, good luck to all those that did. Tony Khan, I swear, if you even think about signing gender, 
just because of a memes because you're a moron, you're gonna get don't do it. Don't do it, Tony. Yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna comment on that right there. I completely agree, and I kind of mentioned it to Noah during the rebellion. If Jinder goes anywhere, he needs to go to TNA. Mm -hmm. Look at what they've done with Mustafa Ali. Yep. You put Jinder over there, and you've got a freaking phenomenal world title contender. Mm -hmm. Yes, Here's please. Let's see your hand up real quick. Jinder versus Moose? Yeah. Wait. Jinder versus Macklin. Mean. Gender versus Dolph, Nick Nemeth. Yeah. Quick hot take based off what JJ said. Um, TNA is where WWE mid-carders go to become main event superstars. AEW is where they go to, you know, their careers go bye-byes. Well, the, the only thing I was going to say as far as what Colin said about Mahal is... I can't see Mahal going to AEW because of how bad Tony dug at him when Tony first started losing his goddamn mind on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So I don't see him or his boys going to AEW just because it's like, no, okay, so so I wasn't worth anything to you when you were trying to take a shot across the bow at us, but now that I've been released, all of a sudden I'm hot shit. Fuck you, you curly head little poop. I'm not. <laughs> Seriously, though. Exactly. TNA though, he, TNA though, like you said, I mean Moose, Macklin, Nemeth, you know, hell, him and Matt Hardy, shit, why not? Yeah. And Santana's there now too, so there is that. You know, there, there's there's more potential for better quality matches with enough story woven in for Jinder and those guys to actually get. Uh, and thank you for that, by the way, Mr. Jinder. Um, uh, where they'll get more traction than just getting lost in the okay, let's try to put them on about nine fifteen and then send it back to catering AEW. Well, they can't do it at nine fifteen. That's the women's time slot. That's nine thirty. <laughs> no, nine fifteen. We're usually getting the video package for the women's match. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. Okay, that's fair. Okay, so, okay, so, okay. So nine o'clock, but do a do a, do a quick two minute things to get the women a little more time. We're bad people. All right, though. Okay. We're honest people. The, the valid. The, uh, yeah, the, that's true. Yesterday's show, we're going to hell for it, to you and I. Not today. Today, we're okay. It's 420 today. Oh, boy. Okay, I'm done. Yesterday's dad's on the other hand. All right. Noah, I'm going to throw it up to you, sir. I don't really have much to say because, you know, I don't really follow all that, but I did hear about that. And also, I just got done calling a great professor wrestling paper. I'm ready to go to sleep. Getting ready for church tomorrow. <laughs> uh, but right. that being said, it's no, always... I was tired. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm always tired, but there's points where I'm tired beyond tired that I don't know what tired is, but my brain tells me I'm tired and you need to go to sleep, crazy madman. And this is one of those points. I'm working on church stuff and PowerPoints for leagues. Uh, the, the scoreboards for leagues, excuse me. PowerPoints and scoreboards. Anyway. Uh, and then watch game next week. Yeah, what what? And then match came next week too. <laughs> well, all I gotta do is show up sober. That's easy enough. And I just gotta make sure you follow the game plan. You true. just gotta follow the game plan for the actual game this time, brother. That's why I got oh, you. Right, right, right. I'm the Johnny Olsen to Gene Rayburn. Relax, man. I got you, bro. Anyway, yeah. back 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 to our regular schedule programming. Uh, it's always hard seeing people lose their jobs. At the end of the day, you don't have to let the character, don't have to let the individual, don't have to get two shits about the individual. If there's somebody that's out there to do something that they love or they're trying to support their family or a combination of. I'll always say fuck Jenner for 2017, but from a business standpoint, it is what it is. I don't work for the business. Thank Christ almighty. Um, as far as people who else might be on the chopping block, who the hell knows at this point? It's one of those things where if you don't fit Triple H's vision, you're not going to have a spot in WWE, not even on the house show circuit. And for all we know, the house show circuit might be dwindling with the changes that are being made allegedly to the uh, premium live event schedule outlook. We were talking about that during our uh, pre-show production talks, JJ, prior to going air for the zero hour with Rebellion. I don't really have anything as far as names that I think might be on the chum block nets because I don't think about that. Plus, I'm not invested enough in WWE programming on a weekly basis to think about this name's irrelevant. This name's irrelevant. This name's too over and irrelevant. This name's irrelevant. Blah, blah, blah. And I still don't watch the next team, although it's fairly to be. I keep up with highlights, mostly because the women's division, Ilya Dragunov and uh, Dijak. But it always sucks to see somebody lose their jobs. We should never have any negative feedback on that because at the end of the day, you're not them, and they're just trying to make a living. Anybody at this point is trying to make a living, no matter what you do, in and out of the wrestling business. So... 
I wish them all the best. I mean, the last thing Xia Li did, she faced Lyra Valkyra for the NXT Women's Championship earlier this year. Failed. She was in the Royal Rumble. Failed. And then she did nothing. Uh, and the other names, the who, what, is the Ikea, Montgomery Flea Market. What? Uh, okay. That was random. I guess the Indian market merger didn't work as well as I thought when you use a Canadian. So I wish them all the best. And we'll see what happens next, because I'm sure I'll be talking about it here on Might Night or my AEW group will spoil it, because I don't follow that news, I don't follow dirt sheets, and I sure as hell don't follow you on the channel that's tag with everybody. All right. Very well put. <laughs> well, sir, let me just go ahead and say you're more than welcome and free to dip out once you're done doing your PowerPoint. Stay with us until you're done, but I completely get your exhaustion, and we still need you for Dynasty tomorrow. All the wrestling. So so if you can hang around until you're done working on what you're working on and then give us a simple farewell as you do, we'd appreciate that. And and regardless. You sleep when you're done. Regardless, I'm a trooper. Whether it's two hours, one and a half hours, or 15 hours, I'll always make it through wrestling, life, church, and family. So you got me. Just know that, again, I'm just very tired. <clears throat> All right. Walter, go ahead and go over to you, sir. All right. Um, there's not much to add about the people that released. We're all saying the same thing. Such to lose your job, but we're not shocked by anyone. So in terms of who else is going to go, I'm not saying it's a definite, these people, but a few people, I, I wouldn't be shocked. I, uh, first, Tamina, because where the hell is she? What has she been doing? So uh, I think Tamina might get released. Um, Since they separated with AJ Styles, they, they haven't really done much of anything. They put them back down to NXT, but Gallows and Anderson might be on the chopping block. And... Uh, uh, I wouldn't be shocked that they released Meacham because she doesn't really do too much either. And the other one, I, I, I think WWE starting to have buyer's remorse for this one. This this one might be a hot type, but I think it has any it has everything to do with just buyer's remorse. But Gable Stevenson, I just think they're gonna have buyer's remorse for him, and they're gonna just say uh, you're not ready for this or something because. His training doesn't seem to be coming well. They 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 drafted him to Raw, skipped NXT, did all this hype, was going to put him uh, on the main roster. Then he couldn't decide whether he wanted to go back to amateur like wrestling or be in WWE. Or and then they had to send him out for training again, retraining. So I just think it's a, I just think it's it's buyer's remorse for him. Maybe a hot take, people would be like, no way, but. Sometimes you, you don't like what you purchase and you got to return it. It's fair. As far as Gallows and Anderson, and I did see in the private chat, Josh wants to retort to that. So give me a second to see what I have to say. But as far as Gallows and Anderson, I have heard speculation that WWE may in the not so distant future try to assemble their own bullet club. Because you figure you've still got Gallows and Anderson under contract for now. A reunion with AJ wouldn't be too hard to pull off if we have them go full-blown heel. We've now added Tama Tonga to the mix once the bloodline is over and done with. And then you've still got Balor and you've got Cody lingering around. And if you assemble those pieces like the Avengers, like we did at night two at WrestleMania, that's a pretty good bullet club contingent for the WWE. Mm -hmm. So I think that may be the only reason why they don't pull the trigger on Gallows and Anderson anytime soon. Mm -hmm. But because... Sorry, Josh. But because... Um, Tomatonga may be tied up for a while, depending on how much longer the Bloodline storyline goes. They could always release them and bring them back when it's time. And if they do, 
then Gallows will truly be the man with nine lives because Jesus, how many times are you gonna get released and come back? <laughs> hey, you know what? You leave old Festus alone. <laughs> you know what though, JJ? You like think about... and gravy, and so do I. <laughs> I don't go back, JJ. Go back fifteen years or a little bit more. Who'd have thought of him and Joey that Carl would have the longer wrestling shelf life? Honestly. Mm-hmm. Well, in 07 anyway. Just saying. That's hard for me to answer because if Joey hadn't gotten canceled for shit that was never proven and accusations that never went to court, he I could know. still be dominating the scene and could be on our TV screens. No, I agree. That, that, that's what I'm saying. So, Who would have thought... So that's a hard one to talk about because he was canceled for bullshit. Yeah, invalid. Like, like I said, I don't, I, I don't disagree with the lack of validity of the claims, but my point is still like, even no, you know, no, you. whether he's wh- whatever the reason he's not on our screens every week. Who would have thought that we would see more of Carl Anderson and have people like, man, how are they not using this guy over Joey Ryan? Because Joey was such a such a big novelty and had such a huge a huge reaction behind him in 07 and 08 and just it it just it's it, it regardless of how i feel about joey it is unfortunate but man I, I mean i'm happy for the machine gun i love carl it just it's just odd for me to think about it like that josh looks completely confused like he has no idea what we're talking about we stay later man so it's okay we don't want to we don't need to get in that deep, that deep dark rabbit hole in the air yeah but and um, and he's probably booty jumbled that i Said what he was gonna say. <laughs> I've done it to you enough times. God, damn, I've heard that's that one. right. You have. I, I figured right. this was right payback. But yes, Walter, my counter was gonna be, um, you're you. We can have a. You know what? That would be the perfect way to get to get to it. Cody goes through and beats every Bullet Club member, besides Gallows and Anderson, the tag team. That's currently in WWE as he defends the title, and that's how you bring that bullet club back. But yeah, ex- ex- exactly, Walter. That's why you keep Gallows and Anderson, because you can have a WWE bullet club completely running WWE. You got Cody as WWE champion, but Finn is world heavyweight champion. AJ, give him the IC or the U.S. title. Gallows and Anderson as tag team. Me Chin as women's champion. Difference is Me Chin wasn't in the original Bullet Club on any on any level. Mia Yim, Mia, Mia Yim's awesome, but she was never in the Bullet Club until they put her in this random WWE watered down Wish version. Okay, but if they count, if I think that Bullet Club didn't they acknowledge her? As the OC did on WWE television, but not anybody with any Bullet Club cred of value now. No. Okay. Well, again, I love Mia, but you know. Okay, I thought actual Bullet Club members did acknowledge her as an actual they, member. They may have. I just didn't see it. How about that? Okay. But but yeah, Walter, that that's why you keep Gallus and Anderson around to make Bullet Club run WWE. Because Triple H is smart like that, and you know with how very much on his Twitter account he is, how he he knows that those shirts would sell. Problem is, though, they don't own the trademark to Bullet Club itself. Mikey? Um, Not much to add. Like I said, it's sad when people lose their jobs, we know, but honestly, I'm not going to I'm not going to cry any crocodile tears or, or, you know, I'm gender 2.0 was a joke really. And then they put him with uh, the, the, the tag team and all that. So I did like Zia Lee. Um, I did like her gimmick. I did like her look video game references all around and all that. So um, I can also agree with the, a lot of the people saying that, you know, who should go next. I mean, look at Omos trying to get on a plane. That's 
that that's the most we've seen of him in a long time. So that you know, he, I, I I don't want him go, but if they're not going to use him, then it's dead weight. I'm sorry. There's no nicer way to say it. Um, you know, and, and then I can agree with also uh, going to TNA, like you said, that that'd be a good step up. And uh, if by some miracle somebody reaches out to AEW, then TK is grasping straws at this point, trying to, in, in, in his warped little mind, he'll be thinking, oh, I got this guy because I, I know what to do with him. I know. You don't know what to do with him. You don't know what to do with anybody. You're 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 drowning, and I'm not going to be the one to throw the life preserver. I'm sorry, Mikey. I'm yeah. not trying to be mean. I love you, but do you even tune into AEW on a weekly basis? I have no reason to. I'm sorry. TK okay. is ruining everything. And much like Jeff said, much like Jeff said to Josh. Don't talk about the product if you don't know about the product. Yes, please. Makes us look silly. Please. Accurate. Trust and believe. There's people on this panel that can give TK massive amounts of shit. And we will we later. Actually, we actually tune in and watch the show. <laughs> yes. I went for over 30 minutes about Tony Khan and what I would do to change the freaking show. Yes, he did. Just ah. believe like you believe in Joe Hendry. Hey, you know what, Josh? I'm don't start. Mansfield. Mansfield, Josh? are you trying to steal my brotherly ball busting here? What are you doing, man? No, but, no, no. Uh, but Jeff, but Jeff, he is right. I wait, do what? concede, and as of tonight, Noah will contest. I do believe in Joe Hendry. Where the hell is Datilla? Somebody get her on the she's phone now. She's there. Somebody she's, get a hold of her right now. She's to meet him. Oh, tonight. Oh, is that is that is that after the show tonight? Yeah. Oh, then <laughs> get her on the phone with her. That, okay, hang on. I'll be right back. God damn I'm dead ass serious. I, I'm making this happen. Do it. Oh, Lord. Uh, I'm not sorry, JJ. I'm not well, sorry. I was about to throw to Jeff, and now he's freaking dipped out. I love you, JJ. Shut the fuck up, Mansfield. Boy, you're kissing more ass than I oh. ever did. Stop it. So, uh, so JJ, alley you it to yourself, I guess. <laughs> I, I said my piece about it when I was talking and retorting to Cleaver. You know, I, I I said what I needed to say. <laughs> and once again, Josh has thrown the show into upheaval. Love you. Shut the fuck up, Josh. Well, Do I have to become more annoying than normal? We'll no. go ahead and we'll do a soft transition into the second topic because I just saw the private message from Cleaver saying that he was going to tap out here at the top of the hour. So we'll go ahead and move on to the next topic and then when Jeff comes back, he can we can rewind back to this one. He can give his two cents and we can carry on. But the second topic for the night was that finally... We have new tag team championship belts. Thoughts on the designs and thoughts on the fact that they've been hot shotting the title matches instead of making us wait till backlash. Because both number one contenders are getting their title matches next week on Raw and SmackDown, respectively. Why they didn't save these matches for the pay per view, I have no idea, but. The World Heavyweight Tag Team Champions and the WWE Tag Team Champions. Cleaver, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, so, 
the raw, the, I, I want to say the raw ones, it's just there's an actual splash of color of red in there. I like them, but I don't. Um, I'm over circle championships. Like, you know what I mean? Like, ECWs were cool, but I hate the Intercontinental Championship and it's round, and then we had the pennies and the nickels for the last couple of years, and you know, I like the fact that it does look similar to the women's world title and the world heavyweight title. Um, and with the WWE Tag Team Championships, I wish there was a splash of color in there. Um, they have that early 2000s vibe when we had the separate SmackDown titles with the, the blue in them, but still remind me a little bit of the ones that um, I think everyone here but Josh was alive for. Um, you know, the Heart Foundation and the Road Warriors and all that stuff held. It kind of is a mix in between. Uh, I think they're great. Um, I'm going to give my slight edge to the WWE tag titles, the ones that were brought in on Friday. Agreed. And, uh, I wish that I wish that Paul Levesque would have slapped that little bitch ass Grayson Waller after he he you know oh god those guys are such a circle jerk it's stupid like I can't I hate them I, I I they're they're funny but it's just like oh I can't I don't know it's it's a love it's a love much fucking hate relationship for me and that team but it works but uh for them to be the inaugural title holders is still just a little irky to me because they're just two guys that creative had nothing to do single with and they're like well i guess we'll put you together and make you a, a tag team even though you guys are complete individuals uh but i guess that's how you know it goes but uh, good designs there could be some tweaks but you know hey remember when they upgraded the NXT Cruiserweight Championship and took it from purple to like black like you know tr like little things like that could come in in between um, so good for them I'm happy for it it's uh, it's much needed ever since we've had the circle with smaller circle on a big fat strap design and then again we're get we have the circle championship in NXT, and now we're getting the Women's Circle Championship in NXT. Um, well, there's too many circles for me. You know, we're all about W's and E's, and they got circles. And, you know, it's, no, I'm good. New belts, it looks good. I just wish there was a slight alteration to the Raw ones. Just, I know they can't do, like, a... Uh, octagon or hexagon whatever the shape of the aew is but i don't know we'll see we'll see how long they they stay separated because i'm going to say let's see it's 2024 uh, mid-april so i'm going to say by like november 2025 to february 2026 we're going to have another unification so that's it. WrestleMania and Vegas unification style. <laughs> well, knowing that you need to dip out, Colin, yeah. where can people find you? Go ahead and plug yourself. Um somewhere on Twitter. Um I gotta look. Uh the Cleaver No DQ on Twitter is where you can find me. And then the Cleaver Colin Andrew on YouTube, which uh, don't do much, but I've been thinking about doing some like different things on there and doing stepping away a little bit from the wrestling and doing more like food related things. But uh, we'll see. But JJ, Mikey, Jeffrey, Walter, Noah, Joshua, it's been fun. Uh, multiverse. 
I get that right? Did I say it? Is that a big you one? You got it, brother. You got it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll, uh, we'll catch you all later. Follow me. I don't really do a whole lot on Twitter. I uh, I rant a little bit about my job, and um, I like a lot of nostalgic ninety shit because that's where the best stuff was. So agreed, absolutely. Yeah. So. Always good to see right, you, guys. Calls. Yeah, I'm going to eat and go to sleep and wake up in a few hours and go to work and hate life for a few hours. So right. <laughs> I'll take care, guys. Thank you. All right, brother. Take it easy, man. Be safe. See you, Colin. Always a pleasure. All right. Now that you're back from throwing me under the school bus there, Meacham. Oh, well, sorry. I, I, I wanted to get her on the phone. I got her on the phone. She'll be on her way after, after she eats. So, but um, back to the first topic. Oh yes, your thoughts on that? Then we'll run a commercial. Then we'll come back and we'll get back into everybody else's thoughts on the tag titles. I just went ahead and moved to that since you had dipped and it was your turn. Right, right. Colin was getting ready to leave. So, no, you're good. Um, I, I appreciate that. I, I, I want. I was hoping that she had like just left Joe's line. I was like, shit. Um, I missed it by that much. Um, as uh, Don Don uh, Adams would have said, I think it was eight for a second there. Um, anyway, um, again, the the releases themselves, the people did not surprise me. Um, it's it's always unfortunate when people that we get to watch on the regular lose their lose their um, their employment. Um, I'm not overly sad about any of them, really. Um, only because they'll hopefully have the opportunity to do different or better things elsewhere. Um, especially somebody as talented as Ayali, who, you know, uh, just grossly underused. Yeah. Um, I'm afraid Jinder Mahal will always be the least loved WWE champion of the modern era. So it's like, it was just a matter of, okay, he's not here again. And he's definitely not, 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 uh, shy about shit talking even subtly at this point, he's, he's over it. So doesn't look like he's going back this time. Um, it is a shame that Vera will never come again. The poor bastard. He was coming so long. He, he shot his wad off. He couldn't, he could he couldn't, he couldn't finish anymore. Poor guy. Um, and yeah, Sanja, like you freaking idiot. Yeah, I know. Well, J James isn't here. Somebody's going to make up for that slack. Um, then you just said that he was just coming so much to Ikea. <laughs> he just couldn't get out of the damn return aisle. I could have, but it would have been me. <laughs> and we're and we're and to be fair, we're one stoner down, so I gotta make sure I make up for it with my with my with my alcohol content. So you know, we gotta, gotta yeah, forever stay straight. Gotta, out. gotta keep pace. Gotta keep pace. Um, oh, God, as far oh, as people God. that could be on the chopping block, as much as going to piss off my uh, my uh, my right hand man here, I'm gonna vehemently disagree with the Candace anything. They're finally doing fucking something with them. So, like Jesus, um, just keep it going until it doesn't. If they, if they, if, if it peters out, then yeah, uh, you know, either do something more solid with them or let them go. Um, if Dexter does not become part of this Wyatt thing, I definitely agree with him too because he has not done shit since uh, Indy's injury and his uh, brief little thing with the Miz. Uh, Omas is another great, great one on the you know Apollo. All, all people have already been talked about. Um, there are too many people on not just this roster, but all the wrestling rosters. And, and I'm not saying, oh, well, shit, you know, these people don't deserve jobs. There are so many people under so many different contracts that we see a third of maybe between the nights of wrestling each week. And it, that's a, if people are under these contracts and they're getting these downside guarantees from these companies, then great. If they don't want to have the TV exposure and earn incentive, then I, I'm not in a position to say, but if I'm, if I'm these people and I'm under contract and I don't really care about my, my TV exposure, then cool. But if I do care, then I'm pushing and I'm trying, you know, I, I, I hear, I hear so many people to get released and you know, this, this is going to be sounding like I know way more than I do. I don't, I have no insider information. I have no idea what the hell's really going on. But if you have a problem with the way you're being presented and you feel as though you're doing everything you can to change that, then do more. 
but do more in a way that's not going to get you, you know, raked over the coals like the recent releases are doing. All three of those men of um, Indian descent that I've seen so far have already, you know, said something that, well, not derogatory, except for gender, um, have all pretty much laid the wounds open. It's not the way to go if you want to, you know, not only possibly go back, but have a good impression going to TNA, AEW, wherever you're going to go. If you're going to come off like a disgruntled, bitter shit, other than Tony, who's lost his goddamn mind, um, you're not going to get hired. Yeah. Because, oh, oh well, if he's going to shit talk them, you know, what's going to happen when I don't want him anymore? That's stupid. Zaya has been nothing but complimentary of WWE, of Triple H, of everybody. And if they find something for her to do, they'll bring her back. That's the difference. I, 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 I had a different shirt that said radiate happiness. It was a Disney shirt, but you know, you know, be kind to your minds. Another great shirt for today because of everything going on over here and here and with WWE releases. So I, I feel like the people are going to bounce back. Okay. As far as people that are, might be on the chopping block, ain't nobody's safe. If, if, even if it's been under the carpet for so long and finally exposed to the air, if Vince McMahon can get run out of his own company, nobody's safe. So that's, that's, that's fair. Yeah, that's all I'll say about that. Okay. All right. So now that we've finished with the first topic officially, going to go ahead and throw to a commercial. We're going to take a look at everything that you can see every Tuesday inside a Stat Boy Sports Bar. And then when we come back, we will get back to the champ, the new tag team title conversation. Stay tuned. And now, preview time. So let's take a look at what's coming your way. You ever wanted to come into a sports bar where the bar keeps know their game? Well, the Jeff Beecham Network Multiverse of Media has got a production just for you. Sit down and relax as the stat boy and his partner break down the statistics in all things sports. Whether it's football, basketball, motorsports, baseball, hockey, soccer, professional wrestling, mixed martial arts, boxing, and much, much more. All are welcome. Your bar keeps here. Keep you up to date and in the know of everything going on in sports, while also having a pleasant conversation about it all. Your host and owner of the bar, Stat Boy Mike. His partner in crime, Dory Lou. And a host of other guests coming in. The food's hot, the seats are warm, the drinks are ice cold, and the sports talk is plentiful. Cassidy 18 Studios presents... Stat Boy Sports Bar. Take a bar stool and enjoy the show. I cannot wait for coming up and getting back in the sports bar this week. Uh, it's gonna it, it's gonna be a much better show than last week. I promise, with the prep and everything, and 
slight technical issues. And then, of course, on Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific, it's the uh, live watch-long coverage of the 2024 NH NHL NFL draft. I've got hockey on the brain. I've got basketball on the, on the good, brain. damn it. I know. I know. Um, so JJ has stepped out for a second. I'm going to briefly bring this up really quick since it was not addressed because we want to make sure we got Colin's thoughts in before uh, he had to dip out. We got a $10 super chat a little while ago from Jerry, uh, JJ's dad, Pop. So Thanks, thank Tom. you, Jerry, as always, for the $10. We appreciate that. And uh, every little bit gets JJ and I over that payday threshold, which I'm already at. Thank you, Lord. So we'll we'll uh, we'll uh, have a we'll have a May payout right before I go to Fantasmic Day. Um, always good to give back to the mouse because Lord knows the mouse take it if he wants to. But by God, it's it's nice to do it voluntarily. Anyway, um, so we'll get back to the tag team championships, the new the new belts that are out. I'll go ahead and take that lead because I did want to talk about it. I love it. I love the layout of the belts. I love that the SmackDown, the WWE tag titles look like a really cool combination of the original brand extension era belts from 2002 as well as the classic everybody but josh era wwf tag titles because they because he's such a young young pup but uh, i i know you've seen him on uh i know you've seen him on 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 that video oh, i'm sorry you haven't seen that video tape you've seen it on dvd or later um mm -hmm. but uh yeah I, born. yeah i know no trust me man i'll put it this way for those of you that watched Ariel's uh, a live stream on Thursday, and she was talking about being named at the Mermaid, that means she was born after '89. I went, Jesus Christ! There goes my spine again. Um, right. Lord of my job. I know. Well, you know what? I, I I see her in person more, so she gets to take your job every once in a while. Um, okay, good. So yeah, there you go. And and JJ, I agree. So there you go. Thank you, JJ, for that. Appreciate that. Um, <laughs> hey, you know what? That's gonna be on your channel. Let's not bury it too badly now. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, that's fair. I don't have anything night one of a draft, so. Just if, we, if we don't, if we don't want people to watch, I mean, then go ahead and bury the channel. But, um, by the way, I will not be here Thursday, so we're going to work out something about Mikey, and I'll, I'll I'll explain. I was gonna tell everybody in a in a pre show meeting, but Rebellion kind of did up for me, so we'll talk. Uh, we'll talk off air. Everybody needs to know. Anyway. So yes, I love the new tag belts. I I was legitimately like pissed when I first saw the raw belts because I told my dad, I'm like, God damn, they, they look like look like that overcooked cheese pizza you get at the school cafeteria or out of the freezer section Ooh. at the grocery store. The way they looked on TV, it looked like like a round, like a round personal pizza you throw in the microwave after buying it like in freaking the back of the section at Walmart. I'm like God, these look hideous. But I saw pictures of them proper with the right lighting. I'm like, okay, they look good. They look good. Thank you but, for referring uh, my current employer. <laughs> hey, you know what? My mom works there too. Oh, she so does. So I, she's been there for years, Mike. Oh, okay. She's why I have my glasses. We we had we've had this talk. To you. Okay, well, you're killing me. CRS, be, be, you know CRS. Dude, I I was suffering from CRS before you even got to the age of uh, suffering CRS. Don't get me started on that disease. All right, just saying. For fuck's sake, Mikey. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, Is it in here? Oh, yeah. it's not in this one. It's not in this one. It, it, it's been a, it's been a. Good oh yeah, it is. for fuck's sake, Mikey. Well, okay, there you go. Yeah, well. yeah. Thank you, Walter. Yes, I love the tag belts. Let's let's throw to uh, since we're picking on him. Let's let's go and throw to Mikey and see what he thinks of the new WWE Tag Team Championship belts. And yes, I said um, belt. Fuck offense. Uh, I can agree. Um, the former SmackDown tag team belts are way cooler than the former Raw tag team belts. Yes. Um, yeah. However, when it comes to who's holding them, I go with Awesome Truth. So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. I mean, and I can also agree with what was said. Uh, I would have loved to. Love to see Triple H give uh, Grayson Waller uh, a receipt, but uh, as we all remember, Triple H has said uh, that you know he's he's good with the physicalities. He's 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 happy with his position. He he doesn't need to get physical with with the talent anymore. Not just because of that 
that he can't or he, he just doesn't he doesn't need to he doesn't want to he's happy and um doesn't need to get physical physical uh, sorry wrong night wrong night it's not it's not he's karaoke of june i'm sorry go ahead <laughs> so um you know and, i don't know if you even want to call the the this former a throwback you know it's it, it's paying homage to the way the the well, original tag team belts look they were they were like a big belt buckle really you know and that's, yeah. that's I remember it and uh I, I can i can see the reference to uh a pizza but like i said the people that are holding the belts i i i don't know how long they're gonna hold them i would love to see maybe a six month run for awesome truth don't don't give them a year give them give them six months as far as a town down under two three months tops if they are going to go through with National Treasure 3, it should center around trying to get our truth because that man is a global treasure. And it should be around him being tag champions. Walter. Yeah. Um, I do like the, the new designs of the, of the title. Get rid of that, the pennies or nickels or whatever they were. Right. I'm just glad. And ho hopefully we get. Uh, Cody bringing back the Wing Angel title too, man. While you're at it, just start redesigning all the titles because well, it, <laughs> it, it's it's one of those like I I would love to see the Wing Eagle back, but I don't I don't necessarily disagree with them keeping the brand specific titles uniform because UFC does that. And while yeah. I'm a belt mark and I love seeing different designs on different belts, I kind of see the their thought process on okay we're gonna have the the women's and the world championships look similar however the tag titles look pretty different from one another the raw titles look like the raw single championships except for the like i said the, the again this is a bad reference i don't believe it anymore but i'll go there now the pizza sauce red in the middle on the tag titles but then the intercontinental and us are completely different looking so if you're going to have enough of a difference on the raw tag titles and you're going to have the other single titles be completely different looking, then I would be okay with bringing the winged Eagle version of the WWE champ, especially since they took the universal name out of it. Mm -hmm. If it's the WWE championship, fucking go balls deep and bring Jack the belt. Like, golly, mm -hmm. I love that belt so much. Cody's been talking about it for a decade or whatever it's been. So I'm, I'm, I'm here for that. I am absolutely here for that. But continue. I totally stepped over here. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah, because he was the one that brought back the white IC title. So yes. he already has the lineage of bringing back titles. But, yeah, and I do like the name changes. Uh, hopefully that means that they're going to actually take the brand split serious this time and only the champions can be on both shows. Because they, this is going back to O2 with the names of the titles. Yep. But yeah, I'm here. Freaking our truth, man, with the <laughs> the magician and thinking he's Ch Champa. That whole thing, like, I can't take the tag title serious because of him, but it, it oh, wow, like, protect it. But it's just, it's hilarious, man. But I, I'm glad that he gets to have a run with a title that isn't that 24 7 meanless thing. Yes, so I'm glad they rewind him. But yeah, we need to put him in that in that the like make him the the man in the bubble ball like like that movie because bubble we need ball, to protect yeah. him. Yeah, yes. for but, for real though. Be between this being 420 and Ron's head trauma, this is Ron's day. That's why you protect him. He he doesn't know any better. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much there. Yeah, that I I think everybody's gonna be happy about these new designs because we all. We're pissed at those penny, and then they had the Trojan heads looking like they were representing condoms every time they had those damn titles. So it was like, ugh, I'm just glad they redesigned them. Well, I mean, it, it, it was one thing to have the press penny copper looking ones for the end of type, but then they kept the design when they split the belt. It was like, oh no, what are you doing? Awesome, awesome. <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's see where we're at here. Noah, we'll go with you next. I'll make Josh wait just be that guy. Uh, all right. What are we talking about here? Sorry. Blah. The new designs on the tag belts. Okay. I'm pause my match game video. Okay. So let's see here. Uh, 
So Jordan on Tony's Pizza with Red Sauce versus Classic Vintage WWE Tag Team Championships with homage to early 2000s. Okay. Uh, definitely prefer the SmackDown sets more. I haven't touched Tony's Pizza since sixth grade. The Jordan's is cheap as fuck. I still order Marcos, but that's just me. Uh, How much that, stuff? Uh, who are you talking to? Uh, that being said, I'm more time to the Tony D'Angelo family knows what that word is. <laughs> anyway. Uh... I like both designs. It's definitely far better than the cherry blueberry fruit roll up with the nickels on them. So it's definitely a plus on both sides. And it does feel like we're trying to go back to the early 2000s, which I can uh, respect. I kind of wish there was more of an identity with, uh, you know, the giant plates on Raw, but it is what it is. As far as SmackDown, though, I mean, I would just like a little bit of blue, like, you know, just a little like globe in the middle. That really has to be a damn tiny silver W. But both tile sets are a plus. And again, maybe this means they'll finally define unique, worthwhile tag team divisions on both Raw and SmackDown. When I uh, look at the divisions right now, I think there might be more going on for Raw than there might be for SmackDown. But we'll see what happens in the long haul. I still say the Raw team won the fatal four-way. That's a whole different conversation. As far as a clown down under, Nick Gold has put those jackoffs in their place. Good for him. About time we have a general manager with a spine. Respect Triple H. But hey, it's a plus. And if this new era is going to make professional wrestling interesting again underneath WWE, then I will continue to support it as long as it's going the right direction. I think this is definitely a step going forward. But still, I, I wish that the titles weren't plain gold plates with a circle around it. I wish there was a little bit more personality on Raw than there is on SmackDown when it comes to the physical representation. But both tile sets are still a plus. And DiGiorno sucks. Damn! What does DiGiorno hate, man? It's good pizza and it's cheap! Those are the budget, man. That, that shit saves my ass when I'm, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm eating on the budget. Same. All right, Josh. What do you think of the new tag title, sir? Boy, howdy, was I happy. Right. Like, holy crap. Like, I honestly thought that the WWE tag titles were going to look like, you know, the WWE women's title and the WWE title. Like, the world titles sort of do, but not exactly. I mean, I like that they're going different. Part of me honestly would not be surprised if it's an indication of some things to come, of some other title design changes, I hope. Great. I like the IC and the US title designs as they are. I, I know that might be an unpopular take, but there it is. If... There is a winged eagle brought back. It will, it will probably be a um, merger of the traditional winged eagle with something new, like the world, like the tag titles, like the WWE tag team titles, are a mix of the '80s, '90s, and the 2000s. They're not going to bring back the actual full winged eagle. They're not. Oh, you stop pouting, Meacham. You know I'm right. Name on Marquee. Don't have to. Okay, fair enough. But you think they're not going to bring back, make another better design to sell for more merch? There is no better design. Do you think they're not going to try? There is no better design. Break your question better. Do you think we're not going to make another Winged Eagle design to sell for merch? They won't get a buy from me if they do. I'll tell you that much. We'll see about that. But we will. Honestly, <laughs> I'm really happy for the that we have the tiles split up again. Yes. I love Awesome Truth, but uh, I'm ready for someone to take the titles off of them. Personally, I prefer DIY do it at SummerSlam, but they can be the heel team as it is. I, I don't think we get a long run with Awesome Truth, even though I love The Miz. More than our truth, I will say it. I do not care. Throw your tomatoes. Fuck yeah. But A Town Down Under. Um, please, New Catch Republic. 
I, I need the big strong boys. I need his big strong boys with those tag titles. Because don't you, I mean, for goodness sakes, those two would look so fucking good with those tag titles around their waist. Those would bring legitimacy to them. And, and I know that okay. no one who's paying attention would very much agree with me. And his, you know, his NXT professional wrestling, damn it, but we don't digress. So, thus endeth the rant. All right. Mikey had his hand up and then JJ, take us home. Um, how would it look or what would you think if they somehow combined the look of the winged eagle with Cody's current red, white, and blue logo? No. So, so first of all, no. Second of all, that variant was out there, and I, I, I appreciate the effort by whoever put that together. Good on them. But no, if they're going to bring back the winged eagle, I want my black strap, big eagle, freaking gold, dual plated by God, WWF championship. And I want Brad Hart to come present it to him. I don't know if I want Brett back. Brett, Brett's, Brett's kind of bugging. He's kind of promo on Goldberg. Or, or or Sean or somebody that's like I, iconic with that wing eagle. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, everybody can throw the tomatoes back at me all they want, but since he actually did do something in the business for over 40 years, it's 40 years of Hulkamania. Have Hulk present it. He's the first one to have it. Mm. Let's see. Hulk, Andre can't, Randy can't, DiBiase probably won't get brought in unless they actually prove that he and his boys aren't actually getting any more shenanigans. Um, Warrior can't. Slaughter's on the outs of the company, it looks like. Underta Undertaker's another one that could. He could. Uh, I don't want Flair near a live microphone. No. And he was and he was involved in the in the match at WrestleMania. He, I was going to say, he was, yeah. he was the one that took out the final boss. So if anybody's <laughs> going to make sense besides Hogan for me, it's Undertaker. Mm -hmm. But yeah, down the line, you know, all the way up to Austin. But Hulk, Hell. it does make sense because he's from that Dusty Rhodes era too. So it's he's, like from, the, old he's from the Dusty era. Hogan <laughs> looked up to Dusty as a fan. First person he saw in wrestling that he wanted to be was Dusty. So it just it just makes sense for me, considering what year it is, the 40th anniversary. They put out so much goddamn merch at 40 years Hulkamania, which I also haven't bought, by the way, Josh, so suck it. Um, <laughs> just saying. So, yeah, for me, that's how you do it. But if they're going to bring back any variant, I'm going to be like, uh, it's going to take a lot of convincing for me to go against my classic love for the winged eagle. Now, having said all that, Mr. Williams. What say you on the tag titles? And then please take the reins of the back show back because I'm tired of this moderate engine. <laughs> well, first thing I want to say to Josh for most of his hot takes. Uh -oh. Shut the no fuck one, up, Josh! No <laughs> In the immortal words of Paul Heyman, you can no. suck the no, 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 no. I, I like calling out that one because I didn't have a chance to tell him before. Okay. Yo. I enjoy the fact that we have new titles. I, like most people, was done with the press quarters. My issue with the raw ones is that they look like the women's title and the world title. And it's the same issue I had when Roman was given the new Undisputed Championship at the time. And how it looked like every other Raw title, Universal title, WWE title, women's title. Like we legit threw up that picture of all the titles and how they looked the same. And it was like, get some fucking creativity. Same thing here as far as the raw tag ones. They're different. But they're the same at the same time, if that makes any sense. 
as far as the WWE titles on SmackDown, I do like that they stand apart from the other championships. Yes, they're a classic throwback to a bygone era, but they don't like look like the undisputed title or the women's title or whatever. Um, trying to get the belts off of Awesome Truth right away. What the hell are you smoking? I mean, I don't have anything of Walter's or Cleaver's. So it is 420, though, so it could be keep walking. I, I know, I know. It's like, so, so you're not smoking nothing and you're coming up with this take. What? So you're just playing nuts, is what he's saying. For real. Like you you need you need to let Miz and Truth cook for a minute. What? They Wait. just got the belt. Why Which are you trying to take upset. it from them right away? You had your turn to talk. Shut the fuck up. Stop interrupting. Put you on time out for real. You can, you can raise your hand and you can rebuttal when I'm done. Pretend like you've been to a debate before. And if you never have, pretend like you've watched a fucking presidential debate at least <laughs> once in your life. <laughs> but you got to give the Miz and our truth a chance. And the same thing with A Town Down Under. I don't understand why people are hating on A Town Down Under. They are a phenomenal team. You want a good smarmy heel team with the titles that the baby faces can chase. Were the Street Profits the right team to win? That's debatable. You weren't going to have the AOP win their heels. You weren't going to have Legado del Fantasma win their heels. So that only leaves the Street Profits and the New Catch Republic. And while New Catch Republic is awesome, they only recently became a team. You want to really help solidify A-Town Down Under as heel champs? You have them beat the Profits. Just saying. Jay, of everybody in that segment, A Town Down and Under hasn't blocked me yet. So I, I like them there and I like Nick already. Yeah, you know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But as as far as the designs go, getting back to the topic at hand, not personal feelings about the people holding the titles. I think I think the raw ones could use some work. You know, but the the smackdown ones I definitely enjoy. Very good, very good. Uh, does anybody else have anything that they had their hand up that I missed in my turning and, and trying to get other things done in the process of having to leave tomorrow? Did I miss anybody on this topic? I don't think so. All right. Very good. And again, we thank you all for that at home. That's awesome. Appreciate that on a Saturday night. We know it's late. So cool. We appreciate it. Uh, all right. Well, in that case, I'll go ahead and uh, throw two commercial. Do we have a queued up ready to go? Yep. We will go ahead and we will run Noah's favorite commercial. For reals or the money? Take a look. No, yeah. We're going to take okay, a look okay. at all the upcoming stuff that we'll be doing watch lawns for across the multiverse of media. Yay! Everything else that he's going to be losing his voice for. Yes. So hopefully we can get Noah's attention so we can get him to do his shtick at the end of this. And now, preview time. 
So let's take a look at what's coming your way. All the wrestling, 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 all the professional wrestling! Damn it! There you go. And no digress. And no digress. And we don't see sports here anymore because even, uh, even, uh, even that's now part of uh, wrestling. And also, because it was announced like about two minutes for you to come in the studio, obviously it's not part of the, uh, the shenanigans yet, but... Saturday, July 20th, Slammiversary. I can't believe this company's 22 years old. It blows my mind. Right. But uh, crazy. And they're Slam still going, oh, they'll be dead in a year. Oh, they'll be dead. Oh, Hogan's going to kill them. Nope, they are the little engine that keeps on going. Not that could, that keeps on going, damn it. And they'll be live in Montreal, it said, right? No. Yes, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Montreal, Quebec, Canada. So once again, a proper set of champions will be in the city of Montreal, unlike the current hockey team. So um, good to see that. Good, good to see TNA going back to Canada for their yeah, anniversary. It's, Twenty it's, years. Yeah, it's their second home ever being perfectly honest. I mean, yes. let's just put, let's just put it out there: the true alternative that continues to keep going. That's it. And I told you to do this in private. If they keep putting Kathy Kelly in front of the Stanley Cup display in Montreal, I will keep cheering for that to be a thing. I'm okay with that. It's the, only, it's the only reason it looks good up there in Montreal is because Kathy Kelly's standing in front of with a, jack, a red jacket on. I completely forgot about that for this week, Emmanuel. We'll get it together and we'll do it during match game next week. I'll make sure we have everything put together. <laughs> we'll, we'll dedicate the match game to the Barry Hills Sports Entertainment. We'll have a memorial. <laughs> an in memoriam graphic. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. I got a 10 bill already going. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay. All right. Oh, no. Uh, anyway. But, um, uh, so, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, anyway. I, I think it's interesting that TNA is going to be doing Slammiversary in Montreal just a couple of weeks after WWE is going to be doing Money in the Bank and Heat Wave in Canada. Yeah, that's true. Definitely going to be an interesting, uh, interesting July, and we've still got our family feud version Saturday skirmish. One of those week, one of those alternate weekends. If they don't, if TNA, if TNA, they just booked it. If AEW does not announce a pay per view, we've got two different Saturdays to choose from. So at least there's something. Well, here's the thing, Jeff. You and I both know underneath that brand is the sub brand Ring of Honor, and they have their July pay per view usually on a Friday, that before Dishonor. So that's valid. Okay. Just plan ahead for it, bro. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would say, unfortunately, we'll have to wait to. I mean, I'll still try to get the teams together, but we'll still have to wait for the announcement because I'd, I'd rather not have to overload the weeks. As great as it is for the folks at home, um, we get we get overloaded um, with. I mean, God, Mania Week, I, I was feeling it come Tuesday. I was dead, so I'd rather be able to take a weekend and just do a pay per view. Just do a open mic night special. Just do one or the other. Not have like 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 this week we had back to back to back because we had to do, I had to do dad so early Friday morning because of my schedule changing. Then we had you know then we had you guys had something predicting. I had a, a concert. Then we have today. Then we have tomorrow. And I'm flying out tomorrow, so I'm, I'm going to miss all of you all together. So I just rather just avoid the burnout. Yeah, I completely understand that. So we'll see we'll we'll see what happens. We'll see what Ring of Honor books and we'll. Uh, We'll book our Saturday skirmish from there because that was a fun one we did last year too. So yes, that's why I, I we're bringing it, it back. Yep, 
I love producing that. I'm watching the madness ensue on my screen while I just was in the back room pushing a button. I love that. Yes. All the buttons. Yes. All, right. all the top points. Anyway, that that's so, all we're doing. <laughs> our final topic for the evening. Oh wow. Yep. Three topics show. Cool. Granted, I know this one is probably going to be a long one. <laughs> it is what it is. So oh, Seth yeah. Rollins underwent successful surgery this week for his torn meniscus. He performed through WrestleMania damn near an hour's worth of matches plus his run-in in the main event with the torn meniscus, making him the true MVP of the weekend. You know, you've got Cardona, who just underwent surgery. And apparently, Kenny Omega is undergoing surgery due to his diverticulitis. He was trying to avoid the surgery, but there was nothing he could do to avoid it. So he's undergoing surgery. And then on top of all of that, you got this 50-pound blonde bitch throwing chairs in people's faces and throwing up against walls to where the Raw Women's Champion now has to go out for surgery too. Uh, I am going to try my damn bit. Because Jeff already is Accused me of being the mascot on the Morton's jar when it comes to Liv Morgan. <laughs> you, you thought so long, I thought you were going to say, who wants to go first like we do in the opening? <laughs> so, uh, oh. I, I see the private chats. I know that Mikey and Josh need to bow out of here shortly. So I will go ahead and throw to Mikey first. Um, <clears throat> absolutely, uh, with uh, Seth. Wow, I mean to 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 fight through it and wait it off. It he, he's like your your favorite pair of shoes and your favorite car just finally going and we knew this was coming with Seth. I mean, we we knew before WrestleMania he was hurt. We knew that it like Thanos, it was inevitable. Okay? I mean, so he'll come, he'll go he'll, he'll be on the mend. He'll come back. They'll put him back in the picture absolutely. Diverticulitis, no joke. Too many people we've known in in the business get hit with it and it it i mean look at brock brock ha had that twice i think he's he's okay but i mean it, it, it's no joke you you gotta get that taken care of there, there there's no hands down about that and um cardona you know yeah i don't follow the the process with with that but uh, I think Cardona will be fine as well, too. I mean, and it's just shape timing for Matt. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. you know, Ch yep. Chelsea should Chelsea should be able to cryptically say that Matt's doing okay if people ask on social media. He's doing it himself. Oh, okay, even better. And mommy is the cream on the cream of the crop there, tip of the top, and all that good stuff. It it, it really really sucks. I still can't get over that chair being thrown. I don't that 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 was one of the most insane yet scientific chair throws I've ever seen. I've never seen a chair float and then hit or hit then float. I st I, You've I never watched any ECW in your life? Sabu did that shit every fucking week. <laughs> yeah, and and it wasn't the chair shot that did it. It was throwing, throwing the shoulder into the wall. That was what it well, was. Yeah, obviously. The chair thing was stupid because you're throwing chairs at people's faces in 2024, you know, which... You know, again, people are so happy at, 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 you know, the edge of the air come back. That's that, that's kind of shit that happens when you let balls go to the wall. That's what happens. Indeed. I mean, like, like I say, injuries happen. We know it's yes. all part of the it's all part of the game. They'll come back better than ever. They always do. There, there's there's not going to be 
the one injury that's going to be career ending. God forbid. I hope not. But um, you know, it, it's part of the game. You, you know, it's 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 part of the game. You can train all you want, and then something bad happens, and then and then you you come back, you work, something else happens. You work, something else happens. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. They'll all come back better than ever. Bottom line. Jeff, you look like you're about to say something. Well, well I was going to say, I, I think based on JJ putting live on the graphic for tonight, I think the question is, um, you know, Liv's, Liv already had, I mean, depending on who you ask, Liv had, you know, a little bit of heat going on her as it is. She's had, you know, she, she, she got, for a lot of people, like a what the hell moment when she was getting booed in the feud with Rhonda. It was a what the hell for me. I know some people were okay with it because they loved Rhonda and did not like Liv during her championship run. But now it seems like it's it feels to some people they're rewarding her for injuring Rhea. And I didn't think about this until I don't know if I would say this on the air or not. Rhea hit the 380 day mark. She had the Cena Batista thing. Cena lost the championship and the money in the bank cash in in 2006. Batista had to forfeit. 380 days, both of them. 380 is a dangerous number for wrestling champions. Um, it, but uh, I guess I guess the question is is the, the, the injuries are always ill timed, especially for people like Rhea Ripley and for uh, everybody else right now. But is Liv's looking like she's going to get a push out of this and maybe become champion over this? Um, is it valid? Or should she be reprimanded for causing the injury? Good question. Um, I do not want to see her with the title over it. That's for certain. Right. I do not want to. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm one of those fans. I wanted to see mommy keep it as long as possible. To it, it, it might make sense with the story. You know, the revenge tour should possibly end with Liv getting the belt. But because mommy got hurt, that's like that's like um, getting off the five freeway at the stop before Disneyland and then driving along Harbor Boulevard and then turning into Disneyland. You're taking a shortcut. You get to the same point, but you're just going about it way too fast. So, okay. no. But then, okay. does, but then where does the belt go? If if Liv was the possible end game or the top choice and that's out, then where do you go? Because I had no clue at that point. Yeah. That's why I wanted to ask JJ, but we'll 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 I'll, I'll ask him when when we when when he comes to his turn. So Josh was next, right, Jay? Yes. Since he has to go bye bye. Yes. I, I have an 8:30 mass in the morning. And I am a, a tired elf. <sighs> Noah's tired too, but he's here till the end. Continue. Yeah, okay. Seth. Seeing the video of Seth trying to get into the ring at the end from the, the crowd videos, and that's why the, the camera was on rock so long because Seth just looked so in so much pain because he was and yeah. just all the flowers for him still wanting to get and do it to go you know you know get dye his hair for one moment for two moments you know, and put the shield gear on and change out of his other gear. And, and if you notice, if you watch back some of the moments of his match with Drew, he doesn't even hit the stomp in the, the curb stomp in the usual way. He has no. to adjust because yep. of his meniscus. So yep. just you have to wonder now how long he's going to be actually out. 
and just all the hope he gets healed up because he, he deserves it. If, if anyone deserves flowers, he does. With mommy, here's the thing. People are saying, oh, Roman didn't defend and he was still champion. Roman wasn't injured with an undisclosed amount of time going to be out. That's the difference. If you're injured and you can't defend it for months on end, then yes, you need to vacate it. We're not doing any of this stupid interim champion bullshit. I'm sorry, it's stupid. No, don't, don't be sorry. It's your opinion. You own it, dude. It's yours. Yeah. I get it. Stop me when I'm telling lies. Yeah, man. Now, in the case of Liv Morgan, Rhea getting injured was a freak accident. And from what I have read, put all the air quotes you want around J JJ, there is no heat on Liv okay. backstage okay. for that. And rightly so. It's... I hate to say it's a bit of poetic irony because Rhea was the one who injured Liv and put her on the shelf. And now it's vice versa. I'll let JJ reply to that, but there's there's a difference. And I'm not saying it in a good way. It sucks both ways that they both got hurt. Now, do I think that they should turn Liv heel from this? No. Do I think she should win the title when Rhea is closer to returning? Yes. Do I think she should win it right away? There's an argument for it. But it also depends how long Rhea is out. And can Liv do that? Can Liv have that long of a run? I mean, personally, I am not going to shy away. I think the boat should absolutely win it if she's not going to go down to NXT and win the title down there. But that's not my call. I'm pretty sure she's going down to NXT. But I digress. So who wins it? It's either Liv or someone else. And then Rhea will get it back when she comes back. And I'll wait until JJ's rebuttal before I bow out. Because I feel like I'm going to get my booty kicked in about three, two, one. Or that. <laughs> Teleporting timing. into the command center via the Morphin Grid. Live on location from Las Vegas. Hey. Hello, Datilla. How are you guys? Doing well. How are you? I'm tired. <laughs> I just got back to my hotel. Jay Teller, dude, Jay Teller, dude, Jay Teller. Jeff, shut up. I will not. Is it true, JJ? Is it true what I heard? It's true. Noah, is it true? It's tell your friend. Tell your friend in TNA. Ask right. Kurt Angle. Uh, Attila, first off, uh, welcome back. Hope you had an incredible time. Tina Rebell was a fucking amazing pay per view. And not only is it true, it's damn true. He finally believes. He finally <laughs> believes. Wow. He believes in Joe Andre. Even Joe Andre. I, I got to know what did it. Was it his entrance video? Because I have his entire entrance video on. Ah. It was a combination of things. I've said it here for the last few weeks that it's been more and more difficult with each passing week to not support him. Some of the shit that he has done going back to the AJ Styles parody to the Fresh Prince of Bel Air one a couple weeks ago to digitally putting First Class into his entrance video. Just, I, I cannot deny his entertainment value anymore. I, I told Noah, I still may not completely believe in what he's peddling, 252 pounds of pure motivation. motivation. But I cannot deny any longer the entertainment value of Joe Hendry. 
Wow. No wonder the sun came out today. <laughs> How did your meet and greet go with him? Okay. It was awesome. He's so nice. I showed him the video and he's like, is that the one where my dog came out? I'm like, yeah. He remembered. So, it was, so it was, and I also met Mustafa Ali. Really oh, nice guy. Really yes, nice. He yes, he is. I met ABC. Really nice as well. The only one that didn't get, it, didn't get a chance to meet was Jake something, but I, I'll get to meet him tomorrow. Oh. Something. Something. Eh, he's a loser. Oh, oh there we go. A little cold did, That was an incredible match. Did he win the title? No. He stole, okay, so he's a loser. Stole it. Desperate, desperate politician. Did I, I or did I not is. say during our pre-show and on Simply Predicting that it was his time and he deserved to win it? Yes, you did. Okay, so stop trying to sell me for being so cold-blooded. Did he win the match or not? Then he's a loser. And was I not right? Did I not call Moose retaining? I said it was too soon. Wait, wait. I love Nick. He's a friend. But no, not yet. Not yet. Slammiversary at best for Moose losing that title. That's the system cannot lose the titles until Alicia Edwards takes the knockouts tag titles. Oh, for, no one wants to see Alicia. Why, why, why you put that evil in, in, Why y'all put that evil into the ether? What are you doing? Wait, Dude, yeah, Masha Slamovich and Alicia Edwards are now a unit. Boom. Oh, that's true. I had that stuff. It's going to happen. Now, it's a mutually, mutually obligated agreement for now, all right? There's gonna be fallout. There's gotta be. There's no way I see this happening. Because let's be real, is Alicia Edwards gonna be knockouts champion and defeat Jordan Grace? And no. no, baby. Uh-uh. Okay, so so let's get her the tag title. Because Masha uh, can do the dirty work, and Alicia can get the cheap chicken shit tag in and get the pinfall. Yeah. And act like she did everything. It's good storytelling, and, and and at least that breakup we're talking about. I'm here for it. Yeah, I guess. All over my head. Shout out to my friend Noah in Columbus with that. Uh, I, I know that it's I over your head, Josh. You should actually try watching TNA wrestling. Damn. But Josh does have to go. I had pretty easy with how short I am. So. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that. that's that. Between his height and his age, it's it, he, he's 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 done for halfway into the battle. Poor bastard. Mm-hmm. All right, Josh. We know you got to go. Do your thing. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you wrestling crazy bastards, all of you. You can find me, the Cleveland combatant, the Meltzer of the multiverse, on the Twitter, at Walking Hymnal, Instagram, Mango Mangram. You can find me here occasionally now on the <laughs> Jeff Meacham network on these shows usually you'll see me popping into dads in the comment section you know making jeff and jd what's left of their hair they have out which is always so much fun to do it's difficult for me at this point i know i still got mine (laughs) shut up mike (laughs) man damn it you're next anyway be quiet so thank you all and honestly you know what if we ever redo that intro. My my fuck Bill Belichick. I that think that needs to be replaced by Cleaver's uh fuck the young bucks. Cause I'd be okay. I'd be okay I that agree. Audio, yeah, I'd be okay to the, uh, the audio clip bringing us into the show. I am here for that. James, if you're watching, clip that and make it happen. <laughs> yep. So if if we ever get the new opening, we'll see. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Be oh. gone, Mansfield. Arlene has and spoken. <laughs> really, Arlene? Yes, really. Did, did I even say anything? I, I, I've been nice to your to your man, to your boy, all oh. night. So come on, what I do? Josh, oh, don't give me that look, Noah. Josh, say goodnight, Gracie. <laughs> huh? I don't get that reference. I know you don't. Just say it anyway. Oh, shut the Noah. fuck up, Josh. <laughs> I know you get that one. What are you, a fucking piece of shit? 
Dude, yes, my no. I was scrolling. I was scrolling. There. What the fuck? Oh, um, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> it's gone off the rails, kids. And finally, go do your homework, bro. Now that's the yeah, number sorry, one. That's right. Get the fuck out of here. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the number one that did need to be played, though, in all honesty. But anyway. Good night, Josh. Good night. Good night. Love you all. Fuck the young bucks. That's right. <laughs> Okay. Well, that was interesting. All right, you. Oh, wait, I had a question for all you guys. Did you guys, by chance, happen to see me at all during no. the... No? No. Wait, I, wait. I kept trying to look, and especially once you posted your pictures of Ali, so I had mm -hmm. a better idea of, like, where you were with the staging. Yeah. But I couldn't really see you in any of the shots. Uh, I, was, I was near the ramp. I was, like, the first row on the... Left, right side of the ramp, and when they if they walk up the ramp, I was like, uh, they you're walked on the right side. On the That's probably why they only expose mostly the left. Yeah. Just so you know, JJ, I'm moving Mikey's show plug up to his personal plug, so we don't have to try to get lost in the sauce here and get confused. Trying to anyway. This freaking thing scrolls like a snail with the damn phone. I was, just to give you an idea, Swerves, I don't know if they showed it, but, like, Mike's antenna literally walked <laughs> ran past me. That's crazy. He looks, he looks good. He looks like he's ready to freaking go. He's a renewed spirit. He's back he home. Looks, yeah, I'm glad. Yeah, so. All right. Sorry, I I know you're reminding me, I'm just I'm try, 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 trying to keep it rolling here since Mikey wanted to bounce out, so. Anyway. Uh, follow me on the Twitter at LBStatKid1977. Follow Dory Lou at Hathaway13. Follow us on the on the IG at Setboy13 and at Dory Lou. And uh, there are our Facebook names. Again, use the hashtags Statboy and Statgirl approved. And uh, check out uh, Sports Bar this week. The better uh, planning sports bar, I'm going to call it. This Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, as we go over what's going on in the first couple games of the NBA and the NHL playoffs. Dory Lou is very happy that the Minnesota Timberwolves won their first game today. I'm ticked off that the Lakers lost for obvious monetarily reasons. Thank you very much, LeBron. Get your ass off the court and actually play. And, of course, the NHL playoffs have started as well. And then... On Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific, we start the, we, we kick off literally the 2024 NFL season with the NFL draft as the players get their names called one by one. Uh, we'll uh, look it all over, see who what team should be picking who according to ESPN. The draft actually does start at 8 o'clock. 8 p.m. East Eastern, so I'm going to give you like a little bit of a how's it going to work and all that, because my assumption is right at 8 o'clock when the clock starts, uh, Chicago makes their first pick. More than likely, they're going to take the number one pick from USC. That is the, the rumor, so find out on Tuesday and on Thursday. As always, I love my family very much. I'm very grateful to hang out with them. And, and uh, talk about all this stuff. They do a great job. Continue with the Super Chats. Continue supporting them. Be polite. Love each other. I'll see you all on Tuesday. I love you all. Stat Boy out. Oh, for fuck's sake, Mikey! <laughs> really, Jeff? Yes, really. Try to get that once. All right. All right, all right so it. on to some actual wrestling conversation again. There we go. Wrestling! Yay, wrestling. <laughs> Jesus guys are funny. Until it comes in, it goes off the rails. Huh? <laughs> I said, until it comes in, everything goes off the rails. See what I happens. Have to show you, I have Will to show you guys my pictures. The... Go ahead, JJ. I'm sorry. It was going off the rails before. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Got a super chat. Oh. Go ahead. I said, I have to show you guys my pictures and stuff like that. I took a lot of pictures and videos. Okay. I think we were going to Noah with the conversation about uh, the injuries with Liv Morgan, with um, 
with Seth Rollins, uh, with Rhea being injured, Seth being injured, and the Liv Morgan uh, apparent push. Okay. So, Noah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, man, this thing went off the rails in a whole different sort. I'm just doing stuff in the background here. It's all right. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just... I just want to make sure we're all okay. Everyone's good now? We all good? We'll keep going for now. Yep. So, again, Jeff, you and I both know freak things happen. It's yes. just one of those unforeseen circumstances that have now been turned into a storyline plot. I guess the favorite thing here is at least that's context because it is kind of a full circle long term storytelling with the fact that it was Liv Morgan that was injured at Rhea Ripley. Now Liv Morgan injured Rhea Ripley. And she's owning that. It's a longer term story for Rhea Ripley coming back as Uber Babyface, getting her revenge. Watch her, not watch me. But now we're in this conundrum where you have to play damage control better than damage control and come up <laughs> with a new face of the problem is division a new problem is champion the problem here there's they limit the identity and the worth of their entire problem is division to a uh, yeah, thrown tag teams at this point there's no real single stars or nobody that you believe could be the face right now it's, it, except for one name but it's completely up in the air whether or not she's going to be part of this whatever they're going to do tomorrow night Monday night Raw to find a new champion. You know who I'm talking about, Rebecca Lynch. Because right now, the man leads by example. The man's been there to hold the ship before. And at this point, they might need the man once again, even though it wasn't in the original plans. It's one of those things where I definitely don't think Liv Morgan needs to be champion because of this incident. But if Becky Lynch is unable to, it might be their only option. And I feel it's just going to add even more concern and tension across Raw and the Raw Women's Division. Now, as far as the situation with the championship, the problem is in general, they just haven't built that level of star power or competition in Raw to have somebody worthy to hold the towel that Mommy's held for over a year. Even with the upcoming draft, I don't think there's anybody even in NXT, like surprise call up like Paige versus AJ Lee that can give me that same feeling of, okay, they could lead this Robin Williams division. Because Lyra Valkyrie is in a storyline with Tatum Paxley, and I feel that's going to continue to fall out. And NXT needs that experience level face value to lead their women's division that they lost when Andy Hartwell was called up prematurely. So I don't think Roxanne Perez needs to be part of the draft. So your question regarding the incident and how you handle it, the incident is unfortunate. How you handle it, I'm not sure if there's an answer to it. But... Triple H, he's a guy that does have a longer term planned out organized vision. And I will trust more in his judgment versus previous incarnations under this incident. So I'm curious to see what happens on Raw. Am I going to watch it? No, Raw's still too long. And I still think the women's division is heavily underappreciated, underdeveloped, and honestly for me, under interesting. Besides Chelsea Green. So I just don't know right now what they do. So if that's the context, Jeff, I don't really have a, an answer. But I do hope they figure it out, and I hope that it doesn't involve Liv Morgan becoming champion. And this obviously might lead to a first blood match if the Attitude Era is coming back into play right now with this new identity of professional wrestling in WWE. But all I got to say is to Rhea Ripley, get well soon. Unfortunate incident. The show's gonna go and bounce out everybody. She she wasn't making me on all tonight, but I, I wanted to get her reaction to JJ and Joe Hendry. So thank you for coming to Attila. Have fun at Impact tomorrow. We'll get your uh we'll get your reactions in the coming week, my friend. Thank you for coming in real quick. All right, you guys enjoy the rest of your night. I am gonna go take this makeup off my face and relax. Yeah, like get some sleep, girl. You're good. Thank you. Appreciate you coming in. Okay, bye, guys. Bye. bye. So Walter yeah. appears Walter appears to be uh doing the boxing thing. So I don't know if we're gonna get his reaction to uh or, or did we do we, we throw to him when JJ was um, running the room? I'm not. I'm not. We sure. didn't. Okay. And I, I was mostly no, in the background. So. All right, yeah. Walter. Your yeah. thoughts on the uh, on the injury situation? Oh, no, I, did did you, talk, did you talk about? I'm sorry, I was typing that. I'm sorry. Did did you talk about uh, Seth Rollins and his point pushing through? Uh, no. Uh, no. Chris, um, I, hang on, I, Walter. Sorry, no, I didn't either. Uh, I, oh, I I, again, we're we're figuring it out, folks. Again, I've been I'm I'm doing twenty five different. We're live, pal. Here. We're <laughs> yeah. live, pal. Get one take. That's it. Um. So yeah, back to Seth Rollins. That goes to show again that level 
of passion and investment and the merit of a champion and the will of a competitor for the business. Nothing but mad respect. And you consider, again, adapting on the fly, adapt or perish, that is evolution. How many times have Triple H endured injuries like this and still kept the business going? How much has Cody Rhodes pushed his limits and kept going? Red creative hate, torn pectoral muscle. Just right. So right. the fact that Seth Frick and Rollins did all this at the grandest stage of them all to usher in the new era, leading to a further storyline with Drew McIntyre and inevitably CM Punk. I got nothing to respect, but it's like I said earlier. Right now, they were trying to move forward in this new era, passing the torch away from Rebecca Quinn and Tyler Black onto new faces. And yes. unfortunately, right now, they might have to hit us off reset. As far as Seth goes, take the time you need to recover yourself. You more than deserve it. And let's see what awaits you on the other side. But right now, I think the most important thing is your own self-physical well-being and your family. Not respect to Seth, but please enjoy your uh, time off because that's insane. I can't imagine the physical and mental warfare balanced in doing that. Nothing about respect. Seriously, nothing about respect. But WWE, if they're going to move forward in this new era, you've got to define a way that doesn't involve Seth freaking Rollins and Becky Lynch as your champions. Yeah, I, I said in the private chat, I knew they were kayfabe in that injury. I, there's no way he was, especially since it was the same leg that he hurt in Europe back in, uh, whatever, it was 2015. 2015. So, yeah, there, there was just no way. There was no way. So, I, while I say, yes, good on him for being willing to push through, man, his, I mean, hearing hearing the surgery that he went under is, that that level of in, damage to the leg is no joke. So, I, I hope that he takes the proper amount of time, I get it. Get to WrestleMania, get through WrestleMania, get the moment. And when you think about how everything was laid out, you don't get to that moment with Cody and Roman making the the callback decision on Seth without Seth being there. So he was essential to night two. And of course, he was in the main event of night one. So, right. um, uh, sorry, he's the opening match of night two also for the world title. So yeah, it's it, he was so necessary for so many reasons. So I get getting in there, but man, dude, get into Davenport, enjoy the time up, put your leg up, enjoy the, enjoy the kiddo. Lord knows I'm going to miss mine for the next nine days. It's going to suck. So enjoy your time at home with the little one. Cause they, they, they grow so fast. They really yeah, do. They do. You so only have, you only have a, you know, one family in this life that yeah. you are bound by blood, whether you were born into it or you created it. So yep. enjoy the moments that you have with it. I mean, yeah, but, Again, what do I always say? Protect your mentality, priorities for passions. I don't think there's a bigger priority in life than your family. And be kind to your mind. You can't see the mind part, but yeah, it's definitely. I respect that uh, quote as well. So yeah, and to your point, Steph was involved basically three different occasions across a 48 hour period, intercepting four different storylines, if we're being perfectly honest here, all yep. at WrestleMania. Exactly. You might argue to say he was the most viable player. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's you know we called Drew the MVP of the of the pandemic when he was the WWE champion and going through that year. Seth Rollins has been the MVP pretty much since The Rock officially got drawn in the storylines back in January on January first. I I wholeheartedly stand behind that. And Seth was the MVP of Q1, no doubt about it. Yep. Walter, come to you on this injury stuff. I know I know you feel a certain kind of way about. Uh, Ronda Rousey when she was in WWE and, and being an MMA person and she had that thing with Liv that kind of soured the folks on Liv Morgan and now here we are again with Liv getting the the, the sour attitude to justified or not from the fans as well as what happened to Rhea Ripley and then of course Seth Rollins now going down and Noah mentioned Matt Cardona as well God, poor Matt Cardona <laughs> death, right I mean the death match king finally the death match is caught up to him Jeez. you know what though he got his revenge he got his revenge on Kane and he got Zack Ryder's help so good for him anyway <laughs> yeah, first of all, I gotta say, I fucking love combat sports. My there you God. go. Wow, holy shit. And this referee's an idiot. And if Garcia didn't pull this out because of those two knockdowns that weren't ruled knockdowns, he clearly knocked them down and he ruled them slips. This referee there we go. to get his license revoked. That's anyway, right. Anyway. Um, that's fair. That's, that's absolutely valid. Seth is definitely the MVP of the year. Like, like to do all that, and now we find out he had the 
what was it a tier three on his meniscus? That's yeah, crazy injury. Like you can't even and a, and is and is either MCR ACL too. Like there, there, there was significant damage. Yeah, yeah. And, and barely Chris Statland or several competitors you could think of have been out for nine months off in yeah. ACL, and he's yeah. been working with it arguably since 2015. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I mean, yeah, remember, he, he got hurt. He was out for as long as he was in 2015. He kind of tweaked it-ish in 2017, and they patched him back up enough to get him through with Hunter. So he's probably living on borrowed time the last seven years. Which is crazy yeah. to me because the schedule he's held that time in that time that it hasn't given out before now. That wheel, it, it's like having a hole in your tire. It, it was leaking air the whole time. And oh, God, it, yeah. It went flat. Yep. Like and, you know, so hopefully this doctor can get in there, change the tire, and we get it. We get them back and no more. Can we just, like, you know how you can cheat in video games and press pause and just turn injuries off and just have fun? Can, can the universe just do that for a little bit? Can we just. Turning off for a little bit, like Jesus. Yeah. And I mean, again, power to him for. Not but no, I'm sorry. No, I was just saying this just goes to show you're not living in a video game, and people actually do get hurt in this thing, folks. They actually hit each other. Yeah, it's it's crazy, but yeah, Walter. I'm sorry, we keep we both keep stepping yeah, over you. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's okay. I like when I, I you been you guys finish it. Uh, there you um, go. But yeah, yeah, we need to turn off injuries for a while. Rhea, yes. oh, uh, I almost called him Zack Ryder, but Cardona, <laughs> just everybody. Like, I'll tell you what, the only better, the only person benefited from this is the damn doctors, because money, money, money <laughs> with these surgeries. Because yes. Yes. that's yeah. f- four or five we mentioned. Just as many people as WWE just released are also hurt. Like that's crazy. Like accurate. And these, this, and these are risky surgeries. You can't just. We always say, oh, they'll come back stronger than ever. It's not 100% guaranteed. People nope. just get hurt and don't come back. Look at Big E. He said he may never be cleared. Like, and that's yeah. sad. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, and this, yeah. Everything you worked hard for could just be ta- one wrong step, one misstep, one anything could just be taken away from you. So Gone like I that. feel for these people. And, like, it's good to hear the comeback stories like uh, Adam Copeland and everybody, but like y- you got to feel for mommy most of all. Like she's at the top of her game, running raw. She's damn near in three, four segments. Even if she's not wrestling, she's in some kind of segment. And just boom, some freak accident, bumps the wall, and here we go, missing. It takes three, four months just to get mobility. On top of the surgery, on top of rehab, we might not see mommy for a year. Right. Like, so it's it's ridiculous. And then Charlotte, not that I'm a big Charlotte fan, but Charlotte's gone for a while. It's like dropping like flies. A, spring cleaning always has like comes along with a season of injuries. Like it's a, it seems yeah. like right after the rumble or after WrestleMania, two, three people get hurt. Like it's like constantly. Yeah. And, and again, credit to Ashley Fleer, man. She is a she is being an animal in the gym, man. She is just working that knee double triple time she she I, I feel like she's got the best qualities of her dad and that she hates being home she hates she hates not be, i mean I, I i think she enjoys being home more because she actually is in love with the person she's married to um and actually enjoys their company unlike her father um but at the same time she's a creature of habit and she's she's not out on the road she's not she's not getting that crowd that crowd endorphin. So she's missing like crazy. So she's working her ass double, triple time to make sure she gets herself back. So who yeah. goes to everybody? I, I wish them well. And, and, you know, Cardona can ask his buddy Cody. He can ask Triple H. He can ask John Cena about a torn pectoral and how long it takes and freaking Cena coming back in four months because he's a freaking psychopath. Um, right. God. The man, the man scares me even now, all these years later. No, two months. I'm sorry. Two months. He hurt in October. He's back at the Rumble. Yeah, and that's just because his dedication to the gym, the gym, and his uh, yeah. his muscle. Like yeah. Brock Lesnar would have got it. Work. If he didn't have this meat, big steak kind of neck, WrestleMania 19 would have been a whole different thing. I think if he's that shooting star, any time prior to, you know what? If he's any time after, honestly, because he was still a big, thick kid when he had that match at Kurt Angle. 
Mm-hmm. He gets any time at, after his comeback. He doesn't need to. He's Brock Lesnar in 2012. He doesn't need to just fucking do a shooting star press anymore. Yeah, but if he bad. does, if he does, it's a whole other conversation. You're absolutely right. All right. <laughs> yeah. I am going to throw to JJ. He is in the green room, but I was going to, if, if you want to come in and finish off this topic, you are, come on back in, brother. We'll go ahead and do the thing. And then we'll uh, throw to commercial and send the kids home. There you go. Okay. First things first, let's get to these super chats. Yes. We have five dollars from Eddie. No comment. Thank you very much, Eddie. We got two dollars from Emmanuel. Did Rikishi actually do it for The Rock after seeing SmackDown? <laughs> after seeing the car destroy and the beat down to KO, like wait a minute, maybe he did. A hell of a hell of a callback, hell of a thought there. I mean, I definitely feel like this solo Sokoa bloodline is going to be the Rock's bloodline. Where they go from it from here, when they reveal that, don't know. And to that question, if Rikishi is involved, I'm not saying he did the car thing. That's just that. I mean, it's a great, it's a great line and a great callback. I'm not shitting on it. But I'm just saying, if Rikishi does get involved, which of his sons does he side with? You got to believe the Usos are going to be on the opposite side of uh, Solo. I would think at this point, with Tama Tonga being the guy that took out Jimmy Uso, and you heard the thoughts of Jay Uso. It's the sons of. Haku versus the son of Rikishi. It's a tag team feud waiting to happen in long term storytelling, if we're being perfectly honest. Rikishi may be the voice of reason that gets the Usos back together, though. You can also use them for that. Well, the, the other thing with Solo is you, when he when he first was brought in, that he I forget who he did an interview with, but he mentioned having not talked to Roman Reigns in however many years and had to fight to get into WWE and fight to get called up. So that's where you keep him on Haku's side or or Thomas' side or whoever whoever the rock side, sorry. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely intriguing. We're still in the era of we don't know what's gonna happen, and that's what I love about it. Same. Another two dollars from Emmanuel. Why is AEW running this lesbian angle with Mariah? Because she's hot. Controversy creates cash. Oh, Sex sales, yeah, yeah. Well, no, yeah. To, to, she just got the call cool there because lots of time they ran a lesbian angle on uh, global wrestling programming. So, I, was just gonna, yeah. I was just gonna say that Tony Storm, I guess, is binary, but okay, yeah, let's go with that. Tony Storm, be whatever she wants doing this gimmick. I don't give a shit. That's fair. <laughs> and then the super chat that brings us back to the topic. Someone needs to tell me what is so special about Liv Morgan. Oh, boy. In my humble opinion, there is nothing special about her. (laughs) She is your stereotypical, excuse me for phrasing it this way, but Vince McMahon diva female. Blonde hair, blue eyes, decent ass, fake tits. Let's see, who does that describe in WWE history? Sable, Deborah, Trish. Can keep going, you know. Kelly Kelly. Like I said, I could keep going. Let's not. Beth Phoenix, Natalia. Yeah. Love her, but she's had more surgeries than Rey Mysterio on his knee. That's also valid. So hmm. that that's that's where she is special. And she's yeah. not even that special in that aspect because there have been a dozen before her. Most of them were better. Well, again, what's original nowadays in the professional wrestling business? Entertainment business, really. Fair enough. Liv is accident prone. 
Yes. Yes. I agree. If Becky wins, what was the point of her losing at Rhea against Rhea at Mania? Exactly. Well, I almost feel like they have to go some abstract direction to make this even kind of make sense. Mm. Because to Arlene's point, if Becky wins, why didn't she just beat Re- Rhea at Mania? Yeah. If Liv wins, she's going to be on Dom level heel heat. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't do know it? if that's what they want to do with her. Mm. Mm. Before this injury occurred, Liv was supposed to be the sympathetic baby face out for revenge. Yeah. And what's the point in pulling the trigger on her turning her heel? The person she's supposed to feud with ain't going to be back for another nine months to a year. That doesn't make any sense. We already know mommy was on her way to being a baby face anyways. But I feel like they need to go some other direction here. No, not Naya. <laughs> no King Mike, it's back, King Mike. <laughs> don't 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 I make me I wouldn't mind Naya per se. But I don't I don't think we do that. No. If I had to book this, you know, and I, I know I don't work for the company, but I do have some pretty good suggestions. If I'm booking this, I'm booking it with the MVP of the Raw Women's Division right now. Mrs. Cardona. Oh, okay. Chelsea Green, I, I said her name earlier. I, I said her name earlier. Again, she said on Chris Fenley's podcast, not about the championships, about the moment. Let's see. What do I remember more about the Women's World Rumble? Chelsea Green getting slammed into her partner. Chelsea Green being flattened. Chelsea Green giving me more about the moment of how is she surviving. Chelsea Green deserves to be the face of the Raw Women's Division. And if she and Piper are both supposed to be in this battle royal on Monday to determine the new champion, mm. you've got Piper helping her through the way. Yep. Yeah. Where the one is? Because, the women's champion? <laughs> because other than Naya, you don't have another big girl like that to really contest with. No. Because Raquel's injured as well. Yeah. And even Raquel, she's. She's athletically fit, but she's not the same dominating size as Naya and Piper. It's, that's that, that's a fair tangent. I, I, I was actually going to say, just out of also context and history, you were thinking about going so abnormal. You were thinking about this battle royale defining a new, what's the word I'm looking for? Front face runner of the Raw Women's Division, a, a single star. I, I still am on that proverbial sword and shield with Big Baller. May I remind you what happened at Clash the Cash the last time Liv Morgan was a champion and somebody took her technically to the limit and yet she still lost? Can we finally fucking maybe give something to Shayna Baszler? That would be nice. Shayna would be a good call. See, here's the thing with Shayna. Go for and it. I'm just, and I'm just going to be blunt. I know it's a different time. It's a Triple H era. It's not a Vince McMahon era, blah, 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 blah. But Shayna Baszler, for as good as she is in the rain, is not going to sell tickets the way that some of the prettier women do. Oh, God. It's, uh, it's facts, Noah. It's no, facts. Yep. I'm not saying it's right. <laughs> yeah. But let's let's look at everything for what it is. JJ, I love you like a brother, but sometimes I hate you being right. 
<laughs> I know you do. I know he, you do. He, he's definitely right. Well, he's definitely right because you got to remember with the females what they, uh, who their target audience is, and why yeah. do you think Luna Vachon didn't defeat Sable? Yep. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Yeah. I was never going to. No. No. I. I, I even I understand that, especially yeah. back then. Yeah. It's just. It's just the nature of the business. Yeah. This business still and that's me off. and that's where Liv Morgan unfortunately has things going in her favor because there's guys out there that simp for her Pathetic. that would line up from here to your house in Ohio to subscribe to her OnlyFans if she ever made an account just to get saucier bikini pics than you can get on her Twitter account because she's not going to show the goods just like none of the other wrestling women show the goods because they still want to get, you know, their deals back eventually and work with other companies. The things people do with their money and their time. Pathetic. It's, it's the facts. I mean, I, I don't know how else to paint the image, Noah. Like, Again, whether it's right or it's wrong, you you see two people standing on the end of the freeway off ramp selling flowers. One of them looks like Tiffany Stratton. The other one looks like Shayna Baszler. Who are you buying flowers from? Uh, neither. I don't have a green thumb. In fact, oh, if I didn't have gardening, oh, work and with me, Noah. Uh, You're buying with flowers him, Noah. for your mom right. for Mother's right. Day. Fine. Fine, fine, fine. I'll I'll run with this for now. If I, the simple man, chose to invest in such a business avenue, just riding down the 405 in California, and I see the submission specialist, the MMA expert, Shayna Baszler, and this oh, Barbie it. doll. That's where, that, you said Tiffany Stratton, right? Yes, yes. I, 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 I now again, this is me. I'm being honest. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, you me don't, and then I'm gonna be if I was not me. Okay, but, 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 but as you're doing this, you don't know who the they are. These are just random women. One who looks like Tiffany Stratton. One who looks like Shayna Baszler. Okay, that that's a whole nother monkey wrench. Then I there you go. There you go. The casual. Okay. Mm -hmm. the ring. All, all right, JJ. I got you, brother. I'll be honest with you. If I was such a wee lad of identity and lost in translation with who the hell these two ladies are, would I be more intimidated or would I be more drawn? And that's what dictates the decision to your point. By flowers, yes. Fighter, pretty woman, flower offering. If I was such a simple man of a different identity and naiveness, then yes, I probably would do the Tiffany Stratton. That's the point. Man, you, that's you the point that I'm trying to make. And I hate you for it. For, for the, I know yeah, you man, do. That was a long ass answer. Yeah, know, he, we took a long and winding road here. He, 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 see, he circled the block four times before he finally crossed the street. <laughs> like, all right, damn it, I'll buy from this one, son of a bitch. We went over the river, through the woods, <laughs> just around the river bend, and then took the second star to the right and straight on till so the morning. Big, the thing is, the thing is, here's what happened. Here's what happened. I was not me. I suffered amnesia, got brought back by a defibrillator after getting hit by some jackass in a Ferrari, and then I was like, ooh, flowers, this looks pretty. Who are you? Oh, hello. I, th I think Stupid the GPS five. lost satellites, what happened? You lost signal for God. a second. Oh, my God. You just he kept asking going, Nola. He was asking a casual fan. That's the difference. <laughs> Thank you oh for my. making my point, though, Noah. You're Ooh. welcome. Yeah, as much as it pained you to do it, thank you yeah. for making my point. Ugh. Hate sometimes being part. I, of I gotta that. be on that freeway tomorrow. Why you gotta bring up the four hundred five for? Because right. I used to play Midnight Club LA. I gotta, I gotta say one more thing about Liv. I honestly believe Liv's oh. spot was made for Mandy Rose, and then all that crap happened, and she's pretty much that. I think that would have been Mandy Rose's spot. That's a fair point, somewhat. <laughs> You know what? 
I'm, I'm, I'm JJ, finish your point, and then I will gladly retort to that because I vehemently disagree. But go ahead, Jay. Please, please finish. I know you want to finish. I'm sorry. Man. Yeah. Oh. That, you know, the this whole show has gone so askew that I can't remember if I was going to say anything else about it. But well, the the bottom line. Is and I'll touch on the other people in a moment just so I can get finished with the live portion. Okay. I don't give a fuck what Josh said earlier. <laughs> Roman Reigns was champion for 1,316 days, defended the title like 32 times, and was on maybe 60 episodes of television that. during that entire fucking reign. Right. There's no reason they had to take the belt off of Rhea in the first goddamn place. Mm -hmm. That's my other issue with all of yes. this. Yes, yes. I agree. That 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 was my initial thought from the get-go because at the end of the day, I can at least recognize, acknowledge, and remember Rhea Ripley being champion because she has been on screen weekly. Exactly. Even if she hasn't been defending her title she's still been prominently featured on television and she yep. could still be prominently featured on television with her arm in a sling. Yep. You know, you just have her coming in, going down to the ring with Dom or hell to Keen Mike's point. You even waited out till money in the bank and then you have someone cash in on her. If she looks like she's going to be out for a whole lot longer. I swear on everything within my wrestling fan mind. I swear I was going to say that she was going to lose the title at Money in the Bank. You know, I mean, so you have her in a sling just on TV for the time being, not really knowing how long she's going to be out because they sit an indefinite amount of time. Right. If come Money in the Bank, it looks like she's going to be out till Rumble, you have whoever wins the briefcase cash it in. Yep. yep. You take somebody like a Tiffany Stratton, you know, have her come in, when Judgment Day is cutting a promo or something, or have Rhea out there by herself because she's been doing a lot of solo stuff mm -hmm. away from the confines of the Judgment Day. Yeah, you have her out there cutting a promo. You have Tiffany come in and crack her upside the back of the head with the briefcase, hand the briefcase to the referee. Prettiest moonsault ever. One, two, three. You're out of there. Yep. And this whole discussion isn't even worth it and, and get, get, getting up everybody's ass about the Liv Morgan shit because we didn't have to deal with it. Yeah, exactly. Beautiful. I love it. I love that booking. You know, and then the point that I think you wanted me to make to Josh earlier is I believe Liv was already injured. Rhea kayfabe injured her. Ding, yep. ding. Yep. That was a means to an end. Rhea exactly. may have been banged up, but she was still able to perform. Yep. Liv injured Rhea Ripley. Yes, 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 yes. That's the difference. That's absolutely the difference. You're absolutely right. It, like I, like we said, freak accidents unfortunately happen, but at the end of the day, you can't reverse a freak accident. When an injury happens, an injury happens. There is not a reset button. There's not an undo button, and you can't go back to a preloaded safe. But oh. how? But when somebody is accident prone, how often do you chalk it up to being a freak accident? That you that's know, a whole different... maybe maybe a good comparison, maybe a bad comparison. But how many people has Ridge Holland put on the shelf? Uh, I'm officially yeah. one K Fabe two. Okay. Right, I thought there was only two. I didn't think there was. He really didn't hurt Ilya. They were just they were using that for the this the bullshit. Yeah, I, yeah. I thought so, but I but didn't he yeah. also injure or at least kayfabe injure what's his name from Pretty Deadly too? Yes, yes, he was the point he, where he was using a wheelchair for an arm injury. Oh, mm -hmm. well, yeah, well, he was he was like uh, live going in she already. Heard they just wanted to give him give, give, give him a reason. Well, I mean, and then Pretty Deadly freaking did Pretty Deadly things with it, so I was okay. To with JJ's that. point, if that was Nia Dax that had hurt her, there wouldn't have been all these excuses. Nobody would have defended yes. her. They all would yep. have said, "Oh, see, because it's yep. Nia. It's just because yep. it was lit." There's and, the other thing. Yes. There, yeah. Yeah. Walter. <laughs> Walter hit getting it. there because I. There you go. I knew I had that point that I was going to make, but again, the chaos made me forget it. 
Yeah, there. if Nia Jax had done this, people would have been calling for her to get fired. Yeah, yep. that's that's but 100% because it's accurate. cute little pretty blonde haired Liv Morgan. Watch me, he he he. Forgive her, right? Fuck mm. that. Fair. Fire her bitch ass. Yeah. So, I am a Liv fan. For the record. Throwing that out there. I, I've I, I've been a fan of all three of the Riot Squad. I, I think the thing with Sarah Logan, I'm glad she's back, but Michael Cole is way too into it. I'm good. So like, I'm good. Yeah, um, I love awesome. the Valhalla gimmick. I really I, I do. I do too. I like it in its base form. But the fact that Cole is marking out for it so bad, like kills it for me. It just makes it it, it makes it ha ha for me. Yeah. It really does. I mean, I'm like I can get that to a certain extent. I like the antlers. I get where he's coming from when she doesn't have them. It's like, dude, the, it's part of the presentation. Like, where's the fucking antlers? Well, well, well for, it would be for like me, Bret Hart coming out without the sunglasses and leather jacket. Mm. It's I've part been, of the presentation. In my brain, Michael's been acting like the antlers, like Josh does with Maddie, which has been like, it, it's been a little much. A little so, over. That's where I go with it, like overkill. As yeah. far as the OnlyFans thing, or the OnlyFans, wow, I went to Mandy Reaver right away. Sorry, man, I apologize for that. Jesus. As far as the Mandy Rose thing, I, I think she was still going to be in NXT for a while with Toxic Attraction and just stood her ground. You know what? A, a lot of other people were allowed to do other side projects, and she just happened to show a little too much titty. And like, okay, well, if, if I'm going to get fired, I might as well lean into it. And yes, to your point, it's still very much. Again, if you if you believe the reports, I don't. I haven't subscribed to it, so I don't know. But you know, it's it's a lot of teasing, the occasional "oopsie daisy." There, that is. Um, from what I hear, Velvet Sky the other hand is just said, "eff it," and you know. So good on Velvet. If if Billy Corgan still wants to employ her, then she's going to be doing that. Then good the choice is all around. Huge difference in levels between NWA well, and WWE well, or AEW. Valid, and I don't think I don't think Velvet Sky or Jamie or whatever is going to be pushing for a WWE job. So I really don't think she gives a shit. Um, and if she wants to work for AEW, that just proves she's had more concussions than we realize. Um, anyway, although it would get her back with Madison. That's that's valid. Although she's doing fine in the uh, it, you know the NWA with Angelina being there and then you know doing the indie slash convention circuit, they're having a great time. And and, and Madison wants to get a coach spot. Good for Madison because I think other than her choices and marital marital spouses, Madison's a hell of a woman and she's a great teacher. Um, but her marriage choices. Anyway, I went way off the tangent there, but Josh Matthews did great. Um. Liv's accident proneness definitely hurts the argument on pushing her because of this. Mm -hmm. um, now, I will say, if Rhea was banged up going in to WrestleMania, still wins, and if a random other sort of act takes Rhea out, not Liv Morgan involved, then I have a better argument of going, you know what? It's her revenge tour. Don't put, like, I forget who, who about out said it, but don't put it on her now. But once we get closer to Rhea coming back, put it on Liv Morgan. Have Rhea win it back or have her challenge it and somehow get jobbed out of it. That's where you get the blood feud. Mm -hmm. Like, but don't. Yeah, but but let it cook. Don't sit there and just you know put it put the belt on her, have her reign for God. If Rhea's out a year or nine months, Liv Morgan is champion for nine months. It's going to be insufferable. Yeah, it really no. is. Chelsea yeah, Green, because, yours. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I was going to say because the we saw how successful her run was when she took it off around Ronda. Yeah, oh. she was what champion for two months. Yeah, um, and it was. Yeah. And it was an uphill battle the whole way because people just were not into it. She beat Ron, she beat Ron out of cash in, which okay, can fucks with that because it's a cash in. Cash ins are a thing, but right. she beat Ronda straight up, and it's like, ooh, nope, nope, nope. If Ronda's supposed to be this badass, I ain't buying this. Nope, sorry. Yeah, that's when you know that they fucked up. But well, she didn't even beat her straight up because 
she was tapping out to Rhonda's submission, but she had Rhonda's shoulders down, and they counted the three count, didn't count her tap. Summer yeah. slam. That's right. And that, and that, that finish works if you have the right people in there. Angle Undertaker, uh, Lesnar, uh, Lesnar Undertaker. With Liv and Rhonda, that shit don't fly. It's you know they weren't. It, the commitment wasn't there in general. Best don't, best don't go to an angle when he Step, don't go to that. Apron. Yeah. Oh, dude, Earl Hedman's son of a bitch for that. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, He's not wrong. Your suggestion of Chelsea Green is brilliant. Can you imagine her as champion with Pierce as the GM? She will be in just immeasurably insufferable. Oh golden my TV, god. Though. It would be golden TV. Dude, yeah. Twitter would be fun again. And then Holy could shit. you imagine if Piper wins money in the bank and tries to go after Bailey and they both have the gold? Oh my god. I might actually start watching. If the draft falls out like that and both of them are champion, Nick and Adam are gonna pull out their they're gonna shred their suits. Yeah, I was gonna say, aren't they bald? <laughs> That's Nick the isn't. But yeah. he could. He could be. Dude, Nick's going to be here. He has to keep dealing with Theory and Waller any much longer. I was waiting for him to pop those kids in the mouth. I was like, do it, Nick. Do it. And I'm like, oh, wait, you, you fucked me. You, fuck you. you could do um, the annoying thing, and I hate repeat winners, but you could have Liv Wade and Money in the Bank again. Oh, okay. And not have the title. And then when Rhea's closer to come back, like you said, that's when she cashes in, and then Rhea beats her back for the title. What but she do... What you do to appease the live haters, have her cash in whoever's champion and have Rhea be the reason she doesn't win. That's how you get the one-on-one -on -one match between the two of them yeah. to blow off the feud. That's what you do. Right, have, right. Ha have Liv be this obnoxious edge level money in the bank holder. And, and then when and then when when she finally goes to cash in, Rhea pops up and goes, Nope. Mm-hmm. Well, again, they got less than, what, 48 hours to figure out. Let's call what it is. You might as well call us an interim while I'm chat because they don't have nobody unless they do the Chelsea Green approach like JJ suggested. Otherwise, JJ, I'm sorry, bro. I'm going to call as I see it. I think they're going to, with in case of emergency, break glass. Where's the private the man comes back around to hold it down in the meantime? I don't want to see the man with that boat again. I don't think she needs Same. it. We're we're past that era. Yeah. I hope. You know, yeah. the, the only reason I'm content with Bailey being champion is because it finished up the damage control story. Yep. Mm -hmm. We're past the yep. era of the horse women holding all the gold. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it made it it, it made storyline sense. That's the issue with Liv, though. It makes storyline sense but, for her to eventually get the title with her revenge tour. Well, no, why you call it that? Yes. Yeah. 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 The word in that sentence is eventually. Yeah. yeah. So one day in the Battle Royal. Yeah. If no. this little bitty, little less than Barbie weight, weight of a person wins that Battle Royal, when a Battle Royal is the complete opposite of that, like, I'm good. And, and, and yes, well, Chelsea's not that much bigger. Chelsea is crafty. Chelsea is a psychopath. Um, I'm okay with that. I'm Chelsea okay with her doing. Wrestler. And she's got backup. And, see, I'll, I, I, you and I are going to disagree on Liv being a good wrestler. So that's just you know, that's that's just the way it's going to be. Well, that's, Liv, that's, 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 Liv, Liv is an okay worker. Okay, she's not a good wrestler. There's a difference. No, okay. Okay. That, that's valid. Okay, definition of wrestling wrestler. That's a whole open mic night conversation for another night. That could go oh, all is. night long. I'm perfectly honest. Because I will smash and put over who I believe demonstrates great professional wrestling versus great in ring working. Because you know what I stand by. Well, yeah. well, yes. With her size and her weight, she's able to get thrown around. She's able to take bumps. She's able to sell the bumps. And she's able to be the sympathetic baby face. Yes. That doesn't make her a good wrestler. No, and she was an effective heel personality as a secondary role within Ruby and her and Sarah. Ruby was the star of that show, in my opinion. Sarah and Liv were backing her up. And by the way, I haven't been on the air since it happened. Congrats to Ruby, for the record. Be at the end. 
Right. Well, I also, I, I, I wasn't, if you, if you said that in the notes, I did not say that. So I do apologize. Um, so what about, uh, what about Mr. Rollins? As far as Seth goes, it really makes that video that circulated hit a little bit more closer to home. You know, because at first you see the video and you think that he's just so caught up in the emotion of Cody winning that he can't get back in the ring. Yeah. But then you get the story of his leg and it's like he physically couldn't get back yes. in the ring. Correct. Big difference. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I I wish nothing but the best for Seth. I hope he comes back sooner rather than later. But as everybody has kind of already said here, take your time. Enjoy the time with Rue. Yes. You know, use those moments while you can. Sit home and watch Mama work on TV. Yep. Yeah. Go to that coffee shop and enjoy your enjoy the fruits of your labor, man. Like For seriously, literally. quite literally. God, the coffee shop, the wrestling school. There's so much for him to do. Granted, he's not going to get there and take a bums because he's a smart person. Um, <laughs> take but, any little break you can because you're still young enough where you still got another 10, 15 years in your career, and you're not going to have little breaks barring injuries. So, look at it as a I don't know about fifteen years. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Five to ten, maybe. You've got to think about how many bumps he took off of his bump card on the indie circuit and in Ring of Honor before he even sniffed Florida Championship Wrestling. Yeah. That's true. I mean, that's so true. It's, it's a fair point. I mean, look at Randy Orton. He's only taken bumps in WWE, but how much time has he had off due to injury? I'm just saying. You know, I, I forget. I, it, was a, it was a day or two ago. Adam Pierce put up that Ring of Honor roster for I think it was 2007, maybe 2008. Yes, it was scary how much of those people are still involved and still bumping. Because mm -hmm. man, the the early 2000s were were uh, freaking Olympic gymnastic level bumping compared to the way, <laughs> the way the kids bump now. So the fact that a lot of those guys are still and still going strong at that, yeah, well, amazing to me. A lot of early 2000 side. bumping is like what you see in an AEW ring these days. <laughs> Wasn't gonna go there, but that's all you do. I, 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 I knew it, I knew and I it. don't. And for Noah, I don't mean that as an insult, but it's just facts because you got to figure who the EVPs are. And then, They're guys that made their name on the indie circuit during that time, so that's their yes. niche. That's that's their knowledge. That's what you know they are attracted to because that's what they worked with. Yes. Mm. But again, in, in 2007 Ring of Honor, they were wrestling more than they were flippity floppity around like a bunch of yahoos. And that's why they're still going. And yeah. and even still, we didn't get 352 super kicks in a match that didn't win the fucking match. Well, no, because because you had people like Brian Danielson and Roderick Strong in there instead. And we got Roderick and Strong. Claudio. And yeah, about to say, and we got Claudio, Brian Danielson. And the rest of the match. <laughs> Dude, we need to find the video of that and just show that to the group at some point. Just for the sheer what the hell did just happen? <laughs> I, mean, I, I wasn't even there for that match. And I I've heard I still heard the tales. So you, Jeff, all I'm, all I'm gonna say, just watch the knockouts world championship match from Rebellion and then get back with me and JJ because I'm just what the fuck. Well, well no, no, what what no? What JJ is talking about, and I'll Really quick, there was a match at PWG. I was I was off. Uh, I was on a Rocky Horror assignment that night. Uh, I had a guy that was on our Rocky Horror cast that was a PWG fan. Also, come in. was was it Brian and Claudio? Yeah, yeah. Brian Danielson and Claudio Casagnoli had a was a thirty or sixty. No, it was probably probably between a twenty to thirty. Yeah, somewhere between twenty and thirty of rest holds. That's all they did. They didn't do any high spots, no like big Danielson or Claudio finishers, just rest hold the whole 20 to 30 minutes. 
and the fans ate it up like it was a Thanksgiving spread. Because there was Brian Danielson and Claudio Castagnoli. The Pro Wrestling Clinic. Of course they're going to do that. <laughs> he didn't even fucking do anything. <laughs> like, really? And I'm like, I have to. I still have to see it the whole way through because I've, I've heard the legend, of course. But yeah, if we if we ever get hands on the video, we're going to like open up like a group watch in here and just everybody go. Once it's, I get, once we get moved, whenever that is, and I can yeah. get into my archives, I'm 99.8% sure I own that DVD because I was valid. there for yes. it. That's fair. That's fair. Interesting. Find a way to translate of it. Finding it. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. It's, it's somewhere in the middle of 2000. 2005. Yeah. It's either five or six. I don't know if I was on cast at that point. Or... The first year I started going. Okay. Okay. So, well, well, cause I started, I started going to rock. I, we're, we're going on track. I started going to rock until late 05. So it had to have been somewhere in 06. Okay. Anyway, well, anyway. At, at least this off track is actually related to professional wrestling. <laughs> yes. That's the also. Exactly. And it's manageable and it's cohesive amongst the four of us that I, seem to know how to gel off each other. What's going I, on? Logan? I just thought of another like thing to do with the women's title, like a big fuck you petty shit. Uh -oh. and, just as a fuck you to everybody who booed her, I would have Max Dupree win that damn title as a fuck oh you for booing God. her on that house show. Dude, <laughs> I would oh run a parade if they had Maxine win that title just for that. That'd be great. That'd be insane. No. Shit. I we like Maxine, but no. I, I, I do Niall. too, and and yeah. Abby Nile has a better chance of winning the title than Maxine Dupree. Agreed. You I don't know, think there's enough fuck I, it in the office to pull that off. That's the thing. So, you know anyway. what? I already shocked the world today by saying that I believe in Joe Hendry. Yes. I would rather see Candace LeRae get it than Maxine Dupree. What? Just to further cement this heel run that she's on. Like this, this new evil Candace that we're getting. As the women's champion, uh, wait, I don't see I her. I don't mind? see her having a long run. I could see her still losing it to Money in the Bank cash in at Money in the Bank. Okay. Or even if the Queen of the Ring gets a title shot, I could see her losing it to that person. Oh, that's right. Queen of the Ring's coming up after the draft. But <laughs> I, I over somebody like Maxine Dupree. Mm -hmm. I'm yes, Jeff. Did you smoke oh. some of this, man? <laughs> no, <laughs> kill my bit completely. Never mind. I'm good. Never mind. Never mind. I, 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 I was gonna have Alexa like, check for nearest nearest hospital on here in you know, Victorville, but he totally fucking killed my bit. Never mind. I'm good. I've got people in the chat that watch my shit and know how much I despise Candace. Like, whoa, what the hell? Blink two times. Oh my God. Are you okay? Are you are you okay? Uh, uh, Android replacement. Bloody Somebody call ponies. Bloody hell! Oh my God! Uh, He's AI. That's AI. <laughs> He's AI. His mind exploded because because Joe Hendry made him believe tonight. That's it. We've lost and, him. And, and, it, and it got and it got sensory overload and came back with an AI replacement to finish things out. <laughs> oh my it. God! What the hell, man? That's why he went away for a little while earlier. That's it. That's it. That's it. I'm going to have Candace sign the figure to you. On this date, JJ believed. <laughs> <laughs> JJ believed Joe Hendry and lost his mind. There's a signature for the, for the Candace figure uh, for no reason. No, 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 see, mind, no. in, in all seriousness, she can still eat a dick and she probably has most of the gorilla locker room. Wow. Check, point. please. All right. But, but I'm just. It's a battle royal. That, that's fair. That's valid. It, it, it's not like she has to beat Becky Lynch or no, Nia Jax. No. It can be some crazy fluke bullshit. And imagine if her and Maxine are in the final four. There you go. I can see that. Cause it, oh, my God. It, it, it's the only storyline right now in the Raw Women's Division outside of the Morgan's Revenge Tour. You have Ray mm -hmm. in the Hartwell Dark Side. And you have Maxine Dupree and Ivy Nile 
it truly is the only other story in that women's division, despite the fact that NXT has created five storylines in their division. Dude, it can even be her and Indy at the end, and Indy feels like she she freaking uh, you know got got on Candace's good side last week, and then Candace just dumps her ass over and goes, "Nope, what you get for being a friend, bitch." And and and, and 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 Safet, in other news, the sky's going to be blue tomorrow. And you could expect a high and low wind pressure variation mixing in between the North California area, the 405, around 9 p.m. Uh, it, never, never mind. What? I'm only hoping for a blue schedule. It's 52 degrees right now. Like, what the hell? How cold out there? It is 62 right now. It is 11 o'clock. What the hell? What is it out here, I wonder? I'm curious now. Hello, uh, I have to do a welfare check on my All right, subject. well, we did get two more super chats, so let's go oh. ahead and get to those. Okay. The greatest chat name that pops up in the chats, 26.2 miles outside parts unknown. Is anybody attending the New Japan show in Ontario May 11th? I For would certain. like to. Uh, I just, I don't have the funds right now. That's what's keeping me from all the wrestling shows right now. Yes, Dang. same. Dynamite is coming to the forum at the end of May. New Japan Resurgence is on Ontario on the 11th. We've got WWE coming in September, I think. September or October. September, yes, sir. It's like, I'd love to go to all those. Do all the things. Yeah, I, I I got freaking against the odds. Chicago is only four hours Greyhound trip away from me. There's SummerSlam in Cleveland, Ohio. That's two hours away from me. There's AEW Collision in Youngstown, Ohio. That's about four hours away from me. But at the end of the day, Price for Passion is biggest for right now. Debt consolidation for me. I ain't. I'll what about money in the bank in Canada? Wrestling. Yeah, money in the bank. Yeah, not too far money either. In the bank. I was thinking about that too. But I'll be lucky if I do something live wrestling related this year. Yeah. Period. I'm gonna yeah. try for SummerSlam just to keep with the tradition, but yeah. it's still a stretch. The shows in May, unfortunately, are for me. They're battling. Resurgence is in between the payout that's hopefully going to come tomorrow and um, me going out of town this weekend, this week, I should say. And then the form show is after Disneyland, where I'll be broke as fuck again. So yeah, it's oh, kind of yeah. it, 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 what it is. Um, yeah. That you right. know, if tonight hadn't been Rebellion and, you know, Rebellion hadn't been in Vegas and Datilla had been able to be here on the call. We had a show here where they were doing a tournament to crown the VPW champion. That's Sean right. Black was going to be on the show. I forgot about oh, that. Yeah, that would be cool to see Sean. Yeah. That would be so, cool to see know, Sean. And Mikey uh, was at the show last month. Oh, okay. Mikey O'Shea. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Man. So it's like All some right. of those guys are actually starting to get up here to where go into this company to try to support it's like hey i know that guy i remembers and he remembers me that's the difference yeah and seth it with my bucket list jealousy going to the going to the garden in june oh yeah that's my story because the story's already ended well i mean for you yeah 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 but for me i always want go ahead walter i'm sorry that's my birthday and i'm pissed I leaving for California two days before that. They oh shit! That that's right. MSC after I leave. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I always, I always hope that they book a WWE show sometime around a King's visit to New York, so I can see the Rangers play against the Kings in the Garden, and then like go WWE the day before the day after. That'd be just that. That would just be a great like quick little two day tripper. Well, again. Only the business will tell if that ever truly becomes a thing and when things will line up as the business continues to evolve, change, and let's just put it as it is, folks. Give us and book more professional wrestling than ever before, even our watch long event schedule. And we're no longer done figuring out the rest of the year yet. Yep. What the hell? Oh, there she is. Oh, there's Tatilla. Just had this sent in the group chat. Oh, okay, I have, I have a turn. No, okay, turned off. So I, I, I'm guessing that's her with her hands clasped on her mouth. Yeah. There you go. So, man, yeah, she was in the front. Good for her. Nice. And again, Maybe I was cool. just had a good, good time and get some daggum sleep. Hey, you know what? She had her front row and she was able to sell the two she was trying to get rid of. So good on her. Yeah. 
And then we got another super chat from Arlene saying, do you believe the rumors of Undertaker spoiling Vegas as the next place for Mania? Well, for starters, I hadn't heard that rumor that Taker spoiled it. No. And second of all, I don't believe rumors reported by internet wrestling journalists. I, I like I said earlier, I trust them as far as I can throw them, and most of them I can barely throw. So I saw the I, video. I know what they're talking about. Yeah, I was going to say, I, yeah, yeah. She's, she, she's referring to an actual clip that Undertaker himself said out loud. Mm -hmm. um, but I would like to believe it's going to be in Vegas, but I'm still kind of hoping they push it to the year after. Only because I can save more money by 2026. <laughs> Me too. But he didn't really say. He, he said, I'm hearing rumblings that it might be in Vegas. Or his best guess is Vegas. He didn't actually say that's no. where it's going to be. Well, no. Mm -hmm. well, right. And, yeah. and and he's not going to know that because he doesn't have to worry about being booked for Manny anymore. So, yeah, exactly. you know. Hmm. Hopefully uh, that's wrong. Time, the last time I checked, Minnesota was in the lead. Menace. Well, well, but that 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 that's also been one of those. We've seen more substantial reports from people in the city that help make those decisions and everything. Yes, but as JJ always says, we don't believe anything until we get some company that are head on some shit. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't scroll, I don't read, I don't have notifications. I know nothing unless you guys tell me, and it's accurate. And I uh, and I will say, good. I will say, if they do go to Minnesota, you'll be happy to have Jeff Meacham covering it live from his living room in Southern California because fuck going to Minnesota. <laughs> Even in May. <laughs> if you believe that. Got another super chat. No. What's the deal with WWE when they come to Ontario? They never say Ontario. They'll say something like, we're here outside of Los Angeles. Probably because they don't want people to confuse Ontario with Ontario, Canada. Yes. Accurate. Yes, that was the official reason prior to 2019. They don't say it now because that's where the Jimmy Jacobs bullshit went down with AEW when they first first formed. So they tried to deflect the hell away from that. Um, that's that, that's something I've been told directly by a WWE person. They're like, "Yeah, we don't. We tried to point out we're here because then we cap the internet, folks. Ooh, that's what happened. It's like we don't have to listen to it. Okay, that makes sense to me." And they're both Ontario CA. <laughs> yeah, it's a great well, little arena. Canada is CAN. If yes. you yeah. Technical. Yeah, they've they 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 tried to make Canada more CN, and and, and mm -hmm. that way there is a distinct difference. So yeah, it's. But either way, it's a fun little arena. Our our the Kings minor league team plays out there. So I haven't seen a game of them yet. But yeah, yeah we, I, they had. Uh, I've been to two SmackDowns there. One of them was a tribute to the troops. Also, it's a cool little spot. It's it's just. It unfortunately has that, oh, this is where the Bucks, you know, fuck Jimmy Jacobs job up spot. So they kind of like, oh, yeah, we're here. We're here on the outers of Los Angeles or L.A. County. It's not L.A. County, by the way. It's the San Bernardino County. But um, <laughs> yeah. technicalities. <laughs> yeah. We're also in Los Angeles. Yeah, so is Yamaha. It's out there in weighty fuck, too. Um, so, yeah. It's silly. It's silly. It's petty. But, you know, what do? It's petty Man. just like the Bucks are. That's right. Damn. I'm well, that being I'm said, the, Noah, the stop me when I'm telling lies. It's not the box. I, I would go. Bitches. I mean, he he beat me to the punch, so I'll just go ahead and answer the question or the statement. No lies detected. Today's show is brought to you by Morton. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, oh, I've got a Morton yeah. somewhere in here, but we don't. None of us. None of the rest of you send me a list here. I don't use the Morton, so like I don't know where it is. I don't want to take time to find it. I, I'm a simple man that barely speaks. So I, I'll say all I'm going to say is this to those that gave more than they needed to the WrestleMania. Thank you. Enjoy your time out with your families. Monday Night Raw, build original main event, single level caliber female WWE superstars. Yes. And really bring us something special out of this Royal Rumble. Wow, no, you're fucking. Battle Royal. Fuck, <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck everything. Battle Royal. On Monday Night Raw. <laughs> to your point, building more main event caliber women. I think that's what's going to happen with Queen of the Ring. Yes. I hope you're right, personally. Because if I had to place a wager now on 420, no, I'm not high. I don't do that. I am. But if I had to place a wager 
Just here, speculation. Tiffany Stratton is going to win Queen of the Ring. Mm. Roxanne Perez will take Money in the Bank. Ooh. Mm. Okay. Interesting. The center of the universe as the Queen of the Ring. Oh, right. It just right. writes itself. Yes. That's yes. Fair. That's very fair. And if Roxanne goes through all of this to get her baby back, just to have to cough it up when she gets drafted, you don't think she's going to try to do everything she can to get that briefcase so that she can claim dominance on the main roster? Mm. Wherever she goes. Wherever she goes. It, 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 just it, something to think about. It's a fair, I'll, I'll fair tell point. you this, and, and I'm just saying it like this: if she's still champion, Roxanne Bailey, yes. no, right? Yes. I'll, I'll say this: whoever comes out of the battle royal as champion will further my, your, the, the the theory making for Queen of the Ring and Money in the Bank. That I agree with. Because right now you got a focus baby, battle royal. You got you got a baby face. Possibly a tweener, we'll call her, in Bailey on SmackDown. Mm-hmm. So if a babyface wins the Raw title, then you almost have to have a heel be Queen of the Ring and money, Miss Money in the Bank. Mm-hmm. Queen, Queen of the Ring is just, it, in and of itself, is meant for a heel because who else can be arrogant and say, I'm the Queen of the Ring? You really don't want a babyface walking around the Queen of yeah. the Ring. It fits I mean, a heel persona better. Seriously, yes. think about it. With the exception of Bret Hart... How many King of the Reigns have been babyface? Mm-hmm. Uh, Especially if you go back and just look at the pay per view lineage. Shamrock, that's it. Owen Hart, heel. It. Yeah. Yeah. And Shamrock was like a tweener. Yes. Yeah, if that. Yeah. Yes. Harley Race was one of the best King of the Reigns. But yes. that wasn't pay per view. Yeah. Yeah. No, if, I know. yeah Owen if, Hart, Mabel, Austin, Triple H, Shamrock, King Ass. Let's you have Billy yeah. Gunn. Yeah. You've got Kurt Angle. Yeah. Kurt, baby. Edge was a baby face. Uh, uh, yeah, he King was. The ring? Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Because okay, Christian first he turned was. on. Because Chris Christian turned on Edge. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're right. At first, he was. Uh, uh, you're right. I'll give you that. <clears throat> Shit, Christian could have made a good King of the Ring if they did that right. Edge was no, no, you know what though, Christian. Turning on him by throwing the King of the Ring trophy on him was just yeah, yeah it was. Especially yeah. looking like the Stanley Cup on top of it. that was just a brilliant Canadian booking. Um, that's what you were saying, uh, JJ. I, I agree with you to an extent, Arlene. But if we really want to get right down to it, most of the women's roster struggles on the mic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's With the mean. exception of maybe Charlotte, and she's out of action still. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so half of the uh, roster the barely team. speaks good English. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Quarter of the roster has thick accents that you can barely understand half the time, like Dakota and Becky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the ones that do speak good English fumble quite a bit. Yeah. Yep. Even long tenured veterans like Natty aren't the greatest on the microphone. No. Money in the Bank is in July? Yes, early July. When was Charlotte's injury timetable? Nine months, I think. Okay, too soon. Okay. But 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 we're also talking about Charlotte, and you said what a beast she's been in the gym. No, yeah. She could end up super Cena in it. I mean, she's super Charlotte. She could, I I don't want to wish that on the universe. Let me be clear. I know people don't like Charlotte. I do, and that's fine. But... It's it's just it's just something, and to, like I said, everything hinges on Monday, which is good because it should hinge on a championship being being won. Everything should everything should revolve around titles. That's how wrestling goes. Um, that is, it's going to be for the most part. Oh, dude, I can't believe that's tomorrow. I can't believe I have to miss every bit of it being on the road. I'm so mad at things right now. <laughs> oh, I'm so mad. All right, so that is going to just about wrap up the topics for the night. We are going to take a long commercial here. We're going to run the Gary Heber trailer. I want to go grab me a drink. I'm out of water. I've finished my cookies and cream milkshake that Kyra made for me. Hey, there you go. So I need to give me something to 
kind of wash the ice cream down. <laughs> if we get any super chats during the trailer, we'll address them when we come back. If not, then we'll just go to the shills. Sounds well, good. We will be back. <laughs> And now, preview time. So let's take a look at what's coming your way. Gary Hebert, the man, the myth, the legend. I was amazed, and I was looking to become a better skater myself, and I wanted to be like Gary. When you look at a guy like this, he's one of the most talented people in his profession. He, he, he's been given gifts by God. It can get frustrating at times when you're trying things that, you know, that maybe don't come as quickly to you as other things. And, you know, you never really felt that sense of frustration with Gary. It was always about improvement and positive reinforcement. Was it really the end? Was that head injury really the end? God has called Gary to continue to be a blessing to others. And to be a passionate example. My name is Gary Hebert. And this is the World Academy of Hockey, otherwise known as the Inside Edge. I would recommend anybody that have a chance to go come to his hockey school. I think it'd be well worth it. It'd be rewarding to uh, all the kids and the winning coaches, from whether it's an adult, a professional player, to a little kid like a minor or a scorer. Gary, from day one, has been instrumental to my hockey career. I started out as a Potential Division Three player, Gary brought me single-handedly through high school and into a top Division One prospect. I owe it all to Gary, the biggest legend on and off ice there's ever been. Listen, watch, learn, be confident, and have faith. Those are the answers I was brought to. Yet, I only now am really learning how truly important those five things are. Through preparation, through appropriate thoughtfulness and thinking, we can learn to untie the typical knots between our ears that drive us into underachievement and underperformance. And lo and behold, we can learn things to fulfill our God given potential. Gary has the innate ability to make people not only better players, but better people. The life lessons they learn from Gary are incredible. You can always remember leaving that rink knowing as a player I got better or I had something to improve on to get better. And I think that's what you excelled on as a coach is giving us the knowledge to know what we need to do to get better. There's coaches who know the game, but, but can you communicate and create passion in your kids and in your players? And, and Gary's able to do that. Gary's got uh, great knowledge and the great hands, but more importantly, his ability to connect with people and care for them is... Uh, Communication skills to me really stand out and separate him, and that's why he's one of the best, you know, in the world. Gary's a legend. You know, he's a special, special man. And we are back. This was great from Emmanuel. Uh, Jay didn't need water to wash down the words of Candace winning a title. That's valid. Um, Accurate. I'm surprised to have a freaking stroke right there on the spot saying that shit, dude. God bless your, God bless your health maintaining itself. Yeah, no kidding. We did get a two dollar super chat from Emmanuel. The real game night chat ah. turn next week. Oh, and we yeah. will definitely be getting to that here within it, the chills. Yes. Just gonna chill for the chills, brother. Let's wrap this thing up and get some sleep ahead of Dynasty, folks. Yes, well, most of you anyway. Yeah. Well, we had him on the show earlier. Go ahead and give him one more plug, even though he probably doesn't deserve it. Oh. Follow the Cleveland Cabat and Josh Mansfield on Twitter, Walking Hymnal, on Instagram, Mallow Mangram. 
follow Big Baller G, the birthday boy yesterday, who was supposed to be here today, but was unable to show up. Mm. Follow him on TikTok, Big Baller G, 1988. On Twitter, no DQ underscore Big Baller G. On Instagram at threads, no DQ underscore Big Baller G, 1988. Subscribe and support Datilla at Rangers of Wrestling on YouTube. Check out her content. It's wrestling time every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thursdays, she reviews Impact on BodySlamWrestling.net's YouTube channel. And then, per the agreement, she will be reviewing both nights of spring breaking. I don't know if she'll be doing it on her channel or if she'll be doing it with her friend over at the A-plus Hero Report. But she's going to have to review both nights of spring break and getting going to be looking forward to seeing her thoughts on that. Walter. Yes, uh, my socials uh, on Twitter, X, Twix, whatever we were calling it. I can go for some Twix now after what I just smoked. But anyways. Um, at, 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 uh, it's at Walter Alex Cruz, uh, Kyle Fire Farms Instagram, and the Razor of um, Wrestling YouTube, which, um, UFC watch along. You can see my antics of my reaction to knockdown is on demand, so if people can check that out, and that's it for me. No, well, got a super chat that may not appeal to Jeff from Emmanuel. My heel era, three years in a row, Edmonton versus Kings go Oilers. Fuck off! <laughs> what are you looking at? Oh, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to say right now? I Dude, the 80s baby in me is stirring right about here. All right? Monday. I'll already be landed off the plane. I'll be selling where I'm going to be. I'm going to be watching the game. I fully expect my last night at the arena the other night to be the last time I sit in my old seats. And it will be because of those orange clad mucker feathers. And I will be a salty bitch next week when it happens. Because I think the I think game four is on. Huh? What happened? This week you'll be the one on the Martin Star. I think I will. Because I'm pretty sure, see Monday, Wednesday, game four will be Sunday. At the earliest, I believe. So the series won't be over by next open mic night, but we could very well be on our heels. There you go. So so come, uh, I'll tell you what, come Star Wars night, there may be some uh, some Sith mind tricks going across the multiverse. I'm going to be a pissed off ginger. Anyway. But uh, we will get there when we get there. I know. Follow me on socials on Instagram, the Renegade JJ Williams, on Twitter, ROWJJ Williams, on YouTube, Casa D18 Studios. Thank you to everybody that is tuned in to the channel right now watching. You can find me every Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, with For the Love of Wrestling, exclusively to the Casa D18 Studios channel as I discuss and review. Raw, SmackDown, NXT, AEW Dynamite, for now, NWA Power, and TNA Impact. As stated in my episode of Inside the Mind of the Renegade, if AEW doesn't do something drastic here soon, I will not be reviewing it any further. They, Mikey was here earlier, so another shout out to him. Make sure you follow him and Dory Lou on the social medias on Facebook, Dory Lou Hathaway and Mike Caldwell, Twitter, Hathaway Lou and LB Stat Kid 1977, Instagram, Dory Lou and Stat Boy 13. Is this the right graphic? Yay! Yeah, it is. Make sure you tune in. Every Tuesday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 o'clock Eastern, for Stat Boy Sports Bar. Follow Greg Cherry on the socials, at Greg Cherry Brand. Follow the Heap Man James Hebert on the socials, James Heap Man Hebert on Facebook, J Hebert Side 95 on, in, on Twitter and YouTube. Let me see here. Is that it? Noah.
Noah Foster. It's he your turn it. to chill. He might be on mute. He might be. Don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. I was on mute. I was taking care of uh, something else, uh, too, again. I, I was He's TV. Uh, you know me, guys. I barely speak, but I'm always happy to collab and cooperate. I always appreciate all of you. But if people want to follow me if you choose on YouTube and the Twix, the Twitter, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to give it to you. Adam Foster, 1916. I'll keep you up to date with all sorts of prediction links. To the prediction, of course, the stable of my simple YouTube channel collaboration with Cast 18 Studios. Prediction League forms a simple hello and positive reinforcement in your day in all things wrestling. Shout out to the W family. On the community tab, you can keep up with uh, Prediction League leaderboards. That's all I've also been working on. I'll have updates on them this week because I'm finally home this week from work after two straight weeks on site. God help me. Uh, and uh, uh, stay tuned to give your own simple assignment for all the biggest shows we covered through Minimum Media, including what we did with Tina Rebellion. Fucking phenomenal pay per view. Looking forward to covering AW Dynasty with my friends at the Multiverse of Media. And stay tuned, as always. I'll keep you in tune with what's ahead in all things wrestling as we will simply predict, simply cover, and simply talk about to follow in the ongoing era of the new era that is the continued era of this industry known as professional wrestling. All right. I think I will tune it over to you for the rest of the shows here, sir. All right. Let's do this. Is everything in order? Because it looks I like don't it's think a little so. out of order. Probably not because I had to kind of throw shit up there last minute because I was trying to get on the air here as we were uh, as we were going along. I went too far. I'm in the videos. So let me just go ahead and go over here. And... All right. Scroll uppity uppity up. There we go. So, of course, tomorrow, AEW Dynasty will be live across – most forms of pay-per-view except Bleacher Report, apparently, which we are all very happy about. Um, yes. 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific will be live with the coverage. JJ will be at the button as well as possibly color commentating. We are st- James did say he'd be there tomorrow, but uh, shit happens uh, as we do across the multiverse. To my knowledge, to my knowledge I'm only going to be on color for three matches. That's the same. Dallas. Valid. That's the fair. Bucks FTR because we know how he is with that. Yes. Then I will be on the call for the two women's matches. Yes. Cool. Because I, I I love me some Willow. Yes. And well, me and Noah are both going to be going timeless for that match. So. Damn it! Did you figure out how to do that? I did figure out how to go Ooh. black and white. Look at you. I just need to put that. It, it, it took it yeah. took a little bit of investigating, you. but you know it. it yeah. Made it work. Is my uh, okay. make sure you have the graphic also in black and white and the black and white background. Our headers in black and white. I don't know. Yeah. Can do all that, but <laughs> I will. Kidding. I'll work on that before I uh, head for LAX. <laughs> God. Timeless call. Shoot me, please. Ah, oh, damn it. There it goes. Um, I'm guessing my old Chromebook can't do that, so I'll, I'll definitely get a new computer soon. Anyway, um, I'm, I'm on sure the phone. Now, so. Damn it, you guys suck. Um, all right. So yes, that'll be tomorrow. Of course, I wish everybody well. I wish most of the AW roster well as well. Um, <laughs> most of you guys good luck tomorrow and you guys do your thing tomorrow. Well, I will appreciate, uh, and I'll be sure to tune in. If I get on the ground in time, I'll be sure to tune into the post show. Um, of course, Monday, you know, Misha's musings. I'll be back firmly feet on the ground doing my thing. Seven o'clock Eastern for Pacific leading into hopefully not the entire hour. Uh, going into Monday Night Raw tomorrow night. Um, and then, of course, the Greg Cherry Show will be on Wednesday. The graphic, the time is not on that graphic, so I don't know why it's in there. I Oh, no, it is. I just can't even see it. God, I'm so blind. Um, I couldn't see the I thumbnail. Agree, yeah. Wednesday, 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 Pacific. I may be on this week. The, the, the whole reason I haven't been on the shows the, in the last few weeks is because I've been having to be home for uh, my son after school. But with me being out of town, it may work out. I'm on the shows this week. We shall see. Now, next Saturday, with no pay per view or premium event or whatever the case may be, next Saturday, we will be going live with Open Mic Night Match Game as hey. we return to one of the most popular formats we did last year. It is the Big Money Match Game 2024. Yes. <laughs> Emmanuel will be challenging Greg Cherry on Match Game, and we will have our group of panelists, including the Renegade himself, J.J. Williams. He'll be on the panel with us, so please tune in to that. Um, and then, and then, my friends, in addition to all the usual 
shenanigans of the week. And I realize as I say this now that the graphic for Under Siege is not in there. So I do apologize to folks that are TNA fans. Under Siege will be Friday, May 3rd. Let me just throw it out there now. I'll, we will definitely hit the plugs hard on that after match game. Not a freaking double hitter weekend. God. Oh, no. The fourth is a whole other ball of wax, my friend, because May 4th is also May the 4th be with you. Yes, sir. Oh, there it is. Yay. JD did the thing. JD is being professional. I appreciate that. So Friday. Yes. Yay. Professionalism. Um, Sports and professionalism. May 3rd, of course. They'll be in New York. And then, oh boy, off we go. Backlash in <laughs> France. Saturday morning, May 4th, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. Um, that'll be at uh, 6 p.m. Central European Standard Time. Followed immediately, if you jump off of our stream after it, the No DQ channel will be live with yours truly hosting the No DQ recap for Backlash because everybody's going to see Virtue get hitched. So I will be covering that for No DQ. At 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific, we will have a Dad's Retro Double feature as I rebroadcast JJ and I's return to doing dads back in 2020 as we ranked the 11 movies within the Star Wars saga. And then immediately following that at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, our episode we aired last year with the top 10 characters in a galaxy far, far away. That is all leading up to Star Wars trivia on Open Mic Night Game Night. And that'll be at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on May 4th. We are going to have just the most packed day a short time from now across a multiverse not too far away. I can't believe it's actually here. Um, and I'm sure some of you dads fans are going, well, oh, ah, no, go away. Um, what does that mean for dads on May 3rd? Because we, we're going every other week. We are actually going to take that week off and push it to the following Friday, May 10th. Because, uh, yeah, May 10th, because that is a special anniversary for a certain somebody and his father's one of their other favorite bands. Well, one of my favorite bands. The, what the hell is going on in the lower right here? Walter's trying to go timeless, I think. He's <laughs> messing with his settings. Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm trying to chill here. Uh, that's okay. So, May 10th, back in 1967, the legendary Beach Boys had a show in. Edinburgh, Scotland. And on the anniversary of that show, JJ and I, and I believe your father, if we're, well, we're, we're trying to book that. The top 10 Beach Boys songs. You've got me confuzzled. Me? Why? Do we not? Are we not doing that that no, day? No, 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 no. The, what you're talking about, the, the show in Scotland, that's not what. No. Okay. The reason we were doing the show that day was because the next day, the 11th, is 60 years since their first number one. Oh. What the hell are you talking about? A show in Scotland. I, I don't know. I can't I, say boss because I don't know nothing about this. So I'm I, completely, I completely, I completely, I was trying to find something about May 10th because it's when we're doing it. I didn't know it was the next day. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm well, in the same boat now. Okay, well, in that case, JJ, what are we doing on Dads on Friday, May 10th? <laughs> like Jeff said, we're doing the top 10 Beach Boys songs because the next day, May 11th, will be 60 years since their first number one, I Get Around. Oh, wow, that's awesome. That's a great anniversary celebration. Good job, booking, JJ. Kevin, Jeff. <laughs> Dude, my mind is elsewhere. That's more than clear. Oh, Lord. Okay. Well, they did have a show in Scotland on May 10th, and it was a pretty big show. It was part of their that 67 year tour or whatever. I don't know. So I saw it in the news. I know it was a thing. Okay. I don't know. But anyway, yes. Rewinding back for a moment. Yeah, please, God. Star Wars trivia. For those wondering, it is basically going to be. Our take on Jeopardy. Yes. It will be featuring the debut of your host, Renegade Trebek. Oh. Because I'm actually going to grow this as full as I can to make it look like an Alex Trebek mustache. 
Well, you can't have an afro, so I respect that. And uh, this oh, will be gone for the show. Oh, God. dude, he will find a way to get that combed over if he if if, if he can. Whoop. I love I Jeopardy, know. but this trivia is. I live way down the street from a party there. city. I'm saying. All I got to do is go see if I can buy one. There you go. Yes. Love it. Love it. In the style of Jeopardy. I'm here for it. I love Jeopardy. And because Star Wars is my shit. Yeah. All I need you to do, Noah, is come up with the board for it and everything. On it. And I, I will give you the categories. I've been writing the questions. I've already got three questions for the, or three categories completed for the Jeopardy round, three for the double Jeopardy round, and I've got the final Jeopardy question done already. All I right, just then. need three more for each round. Yeah, I've right. still got a little over a week to make that happen, almost two weeks from yeah. today, because yeah. yeah. it's not past midnight on the West Coast yet. All right. So I've got two weeks from today to fix it. Hopefully by the time we go live with Match Game, I will have the questions for the Jeopardy that I can get you. Okay. I've got two weeks to get my Johnny Gilbert voice ready to go. That's it. You got to do that. You got to do that intro with some justice, man. Oh, no. Like, it's funny. When um, when he really started inflecting on cash winnings. Oh, of course, yeah. Oh, hell yes. Kokomo is a beautiful song, but yeah, when he, I forget when he, it may have been before Alex died, I forget, but Johnny Gilbert really started in fucking the word cash winnings on the champions description. Yeah. And, and since Greg's in, you know, you know, I, I could give him that proper intro. I've been working on it, I'm trying to get it back because I, I did that for a while. I was really good at it. It, it, it made my dad pop every night at seven o'clock. It was funnier and shit. So gotcha. I'm working on it. I'm working. Hey. I'm ready. I, I, I actually, I, I forget who the. Uh, Johnny Olson's the match. Johnny game. Olson, he's the old school guy. He was from like a match game, uh, even. So don't worry, I got you for match game. Well, I was, I was saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Johnny Olson, I can probably pull off if I listen to because match games on the air every day anyway. So I'll work on those the next two weeks. I'll work on it. I got it. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. I love yeah, 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 yeah. This, this, this excites me. I love producing it, these. It does. But, and and <clears throat> sorry. So to throw it out there to the viewers at home, though, because we're going to need three contestants for Jeopardy. We'll have our reigning defending champion, whoever survives match game, whether it's Greg Cherry or Emmanuel. Yes. We'll need two challengers to go up against them in Jeopardy. Yep. Can't be me. I'm the one writing the questions. No. Me. Can't be Jeff. I've been bouncing the questions off of him so he knows what some of them are. He doesn't know all of them. Yes. But he knows some of them. So that wouldn't sure. be fair. No. Noah is our tech man for the game shows. He's either tech man or he's host. He's yeah. one of those two when it comes to the game shows. Because <laughs> those are his strengths for that. Ah, oh, you're too nice. <laughs> and he's going shit. You know, if he wants to win that game now. <laughs> and I don't know enough about Star Wars to make it competitive. So, <laughs> dude. dude. I, I would say call a friend in, but Bruce would play right these motherfuckers. <laughs> I mean, I've been, you can ask Jeff, because like I said, I've found some of the questions off him. I feel like I've made the questions pretty common knowledge. You know, at, at least yeah. the the three lowest increments yeah, yeah, should be stuff that the casual viewer should know pretty easily. The 200, yes. the 400, the 600, basically. And one, two, three hundred for the original round. Yeah. 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 Ah, you're going real old school. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess. oh, yeah. But the four, five hundred and the eight hundred thousand, those get a little bit trickier. As they should, because they're higher dollar values. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He he threw one at me. For, for, I'll tell you right now. He threw one at me I did not know. And he threw one at me. I had to, another one I had to think about. And I didn't know the answer for the reason that people should know the answer. I'll put it that way. Fair enough. And there That's are a couple think. answers where, you know, I have, like, the answer, and then I have slash and a secondary answer. Like, you know, the judges will accept that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So. It'll be good. 
I, I think this will be a really good one. And again, considering that Star Wars is totally my shit. Oh yes. Yeah. That that's why I'm stepping into the host role for this one. I've got to be the one yep. out front for right. that. Right. And yes. make sure the contestants understand how Jeopardy works because their answer has to be in the form of a question. Yes. Yep. Yes. We won't make you answer like Yoda, don't worry, but it has to be in the form of a question. Okay. I thought about this it, I was right. going to. I was going to. We're going to do um, this shit right. I'm going to produce yeah. this shit. We're going to do this shit right. We, we are leaning so hard into this day. It's a it's a big day for us anyway because JJ loves Star Wars so much and I've been into it a lot in the last quarter century and especially the last few years now that Disney got their hands on it. And yes, the movies are what they are. Don't start at me. I ain't got time for that shit. I got to go to bed. But <laughs> Star Wars being a part of the Disney parks is just so fucking cool i remember bringing him and his girl and the kids we had with him at the t- us at the time into galaxy's edge for the first time and i i did did we get the did we get reactions on film or on video i think so no yeah i meant to every time i've brought a fan even a casual fan back there And some get teary because it's that well done. It's, and remember, the, it's, it's immersive. It, oh, it's so you feel like you walk out of Disneyland on a walking path between Frontierland and Fantasyland onto another friggin' planet. It is so awesome, and I am so happy that I got to be a part of that with so many people. And it's not about a Star Wars marathon on May Fourth for a, a channel that broadcasts wrestling, which is good for them. It's because of this guy we have what we call the Williams verse binge. Because we've got the movies, we've got the TV shows, we've got the holiday special because god damn it, that should be watched by everybody at least once. Just for the mind fuck of it all. Um, and uh, considering Walter's been smoking, this might be a perfect opportunity for him to watch it tonight. Walter, I'm telling you, get your binge on, and if you got the good stuff left, throw on the holiday special. I'll send you a link to a good copy. Uh, I've, seen, and you can, I've seen them, I just don't Oh, no, 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 You've no, no. you the Star not, Wars holiday special? No, not the holiday special. Oh, saying, that's what we're talking oh, about. Uh, oh. Star Wars, the Stallers <laughs> holiday special lives in infamy for all the wrong reasons. It is the only property. I'm, I'm telling you this as a former employee of the company. Mm-hmm. It is the only property in the Star Wars library that will never see a legitimate light of day on Disney Plus or any released video media legitimate i say because bootlegs are all over the place because there is more cocaine in that special than there is in an 80s wwf locker room damn and i am not exaggerating when i say that picky year in the 80s for wwf everybody thought that the planet of hot was covered in snow oh no it's covered Mm. in cocaine oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah And, 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 and oh, this is the fan you guys were talking about a while back. Yep. Yeah. It all circles Ooh. back. No, it's a circle of life and shit. Carrie uh, Fisher was so coked out of her um, mind while filming yeah. it. Like, it, you can see it in her eyes. Yeah, she is fucked up in this movie. Yeah, I, 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 remember, I remember this conversation. Oh, it, Lord. It was broadcast the year after the original movie came out on CBS, and it only ever aired once, that I, as far as like one year <laughs> that I'm aware of. Because uh, George Lucas said, never nope. shown again. <laughs> George said, nope, not today. I'm good. Went to and a he, black hole. The only My reason it's acknowledged, it, it's acknowledged at all in on Disney Plus, if you watch, there's a in the in the vintage section, there is a uh, a cartoon about the origin of Boba Fett that occurred within the celebration of Life Day, and the description does mention that it was broadcast on a holiday special. You're never going to see anything else of it, and if they do, that means Kathleen Kennedy finally went against George Lucas's wishes. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. And, and it wasn't that. for the fact that. Books, you know, extended universe aside. Yeah. Special editions, putting them into a new hope aside. Yeah. That was the debut of the Boba Fett character. Yes. Yes. Who then played prominent into the Empire Strikes Back and died in Return of the Jedi. Like, if it wasn't for that segment, 
it wouldn't even be on Disney Plus. But because Boba Fett is such a loved character and that little cartoon is what introduced us to him, that's why it's acknowledged Roman Reign style. Yes. It is part of the bid for a reason. And Emmanuel, I'm going to disagree with you. It doesn't even get on the tracks properly from the opening minute. This is fair. That shit is crazy from jump. Dude, like the first 10 minutes, I shit you not. The first 10 minutes of the special is Chewbacca's Wookiee family speaking their Wookiee language with no subtitles. Nope. So you've got no fucking clue what they're saying. It's just these Wookiees. Yes. For 10 minutes. To answer your question, Walter, yes. If you need to go, go for it, brother, because we're just riffing about the movies at Holly Special at this point. All right. We're about, <laughs> we're about to get out of here. I did want to answer um, Emmanuel's non super chatted questions real quick because they do tie into this. Okay. None of the questions as of yet have anything to do with animated versions or holiday specials. Okay. There is one whole category about The Mandalorian, though. There you go. So I would at least watch the first season of that. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I've basically been trying to stick to the theatrical motion pictures because that's what everybody has seen. Yes. Even the casual fans, you know, once when I was a wee lad, I watched Star Wars and I learned that Darth Vader was Luke Skywalker's father. <gasps> what? That's probably you know. one of the only things I know about Star Wars and I've seen nothing in any way <laughs> from it. But I, I basically I know the lines always screwed up. <laughs> Go ahead, Judy. But I've basically just tried to stick to the eleven movies that Jeff and I ranked. Oh Jesus Christ, eleven movies in that friggin' shit. I think there's three trilogies. That, that's that's only if you count the theatricals. There's also two made for TV Ewok movies. Yep. Then there's the Clone Wars cartoon movie. Yep. Then there's the Ewoks and Droids cartoons from the eighties. Yep. Then there's the Clone Wars, the Bad Batch, the Mandalorian, Andor, Kenobi, the Book of Boba Fett. I'm sure I'm forgetting some others. Soka. Yeah, thank you, Ahsoka. But I'm not going through all that because I haven't even seen all that shit. Right. I didn't yeah. even get through the first season of The Mandalorian. I did. Oh. Just I'll be getting because it came up and I didn't really, you know, get to finish it. Yep. It was addicting. I had to I had binge watched this out of it. So yeah. Yeah. next so I basically tried to just stick to the movies. Yes. Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith, The New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, Force Awakens, the one we don't talk about, The Rise of Skywalker. Rogue One Solo. The Last Jedi is the one we tried. I was going to say, about. don't leave him hanging because I'm like, wait, what the fuck do we do? <laughs> if you're on Disney Plus, you're good with the with the nine movies, guys. You're uh, plus Solo and Rogue One. Why my colleague dragged me to Solo, I'll never understand in my life. I still because they, the you, again, anticipation was a thing. If you don't know going in, you you don't know. But if you know going in, you do that, you're a bad person. Yeah. Oh, I I, I, go ahead I and take off, Walter. Good night, brother. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, Walter. I, I literally was just doing this the entire time, like, well, with no reaction. But again, if you've not seen the rest yeah. of them, there's no context anyway. Exactly. You've got to at least see A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi to even give half a damn about the backstory of Han Solo. Yes. Yes. But well, at least got to see those three. That ain't yeah. never gonna happen. I mean, yeah, you know, it, 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 yeah. It, it, if somebody takes you to solo completely blind, it, then then if they know it, then they're they're they're, they're just evil. Um, but yeah. And and for for everybody that has never seen Star Wars that wants to be part of this and play along at home, and you've got two weeks to binge them. Yeah, seriously, you've got fourteen days to watch eleven movies. Yes. 
and it's a movie a day. Yeah, and if you've never actually seen them, other than the JJ spoiler, it you know it is what it is now. But it's been forty years, so give me a break. Uh, forty-five almost. No, over forty-five years. Yeah, the hell with it. So okay, uh, that you know what I considering Tony's haven't been. Uh, Damn, man, you guys are evil in the chat room with these spoilers. Goodness gracious. Hey, that's 30 years old. Fuck me, it is. Oh, my God. Wow. Okay. I, I need to get my old team my cookie. It's time to say goodnight. All right. I think, I think with that, let's go Let's go ahead and close this thing out. Someone play uh -huh. the millionaire horn. Let's get off the air. Yeah. Wow. Jesus Christ. That was, one, that was like the first Disney movie I ever saw besides Oliver and company when I was once a wee lad. Yes. All of our company was fucking good, dude. Yeah, and there's oh, a yeah. reason why I never got turned into a crappy CGI remake or had a sequel. But again, I'm not here to talk about movies. I'm here to go to bed. Don't <laughs> jinx it. Say it fair, fair no, uh, go worry, ahead and huh? take us out of here. Why should we care? Uh, why should I worry? Uh, that being said, folks, the, this is definitely one that's going to go into annals and probably stay in the vault never to be seen again. I hope for uh, JJ. <laughs> God bless him for surviving everybody else's insanity. This has been another weekly installment of the Saturday Night Shenanigans because he got high 420 edition of Open Mic Night. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, until next time, we'll see you at the Jeopardy Network. What if it's me and our coverage of Dynasty? But I always leave you out with this. Why? Because for me, I am nothing more but a simple man and a lifelong fan of professional wrestling. Damn it! Who only wishes to encourage you that there are no winners, no losers, no betters. Just fans will appear with this passion we all share. At the end of the day, folks, support one another, respect each other, protect your mentality too, treasure your families, and just enjoy life and enjoy professional wrestling. It is truly as simple as that. There you go. So for the West Coast Professor Jeff Meacham, for the simple man Noah Foster, for Stat Boy Mike, for a man, for um, Josh, for Cleaver, for Walter, for Detella. Thank you for joining us and tuning in today. Try to get some rest, and we will see you tomorrow for Dynasty. The Jeff Meacham Network, Multiverse of Media. For over 15 years, the recognized symbol of excellence and the standard bearer in coverage of sports and entertainment. <laughs> <laughs>